taxpayers' money. This November, the choice is clear. Vote for the team that gets the job done. Vote Democrat. Come to Newburgh Cinemas and enjoy quality entertainment that's so close to home. It's the entertainment center in Warry County. Newburgh Cinemas has been bringing you first-rate movies for over 18 years. Thursday through Monday, adults are just $3.75. Children and senior citizens, only $2.50. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, all seats, only $2.50. And free refills on a bucket of hot popcorn all the time. Now playing, it's Christopher Columbus, rated PG-13, and a league of their own, rated PG. For showtimes, call Newburgh Cinemas at 853-6661. Well, tonight's game is uh, a brand new ball game for everybody. This is Warwick Cable Advertising and Century Cable's first uh, high school football game of the week featuring the Castle Knights and the Boonville Pioneers. Hi, everybody. My name is Warren Disler, along with Jack Keller. And tonight we've got one heck of a football game, a rivalry that goes back into the 60s, and that's Boonville and Castle, Jack. Oh, yeah, Warren. This is, a, this is always a big game in Warwick County. It's for bragging rights in Warwick County. These two teams square off and go at each other. Uh, the, the game probably has been diminished over the years a little bit with Castle being in 5A and uh, what have you, but it's still a big-time game. A lot of fans out here played in this game over the years, and there's a, lot of, there's a lot of history behind this. So we got a good night here, and we're going to have a good football game. Probably could be equated to the uh, modern-day rights uh, rivalry on the west side of Evansville in that uh, the possibility of cousin uh, playing cousin and a relative against relative. Oh, no question about that. And as I said, a lot of people will go back and play in this game. It'll be here tonight. Of course, a lot of nostalgia here tonight with the 82 championship team here. And I think the Knights have got a lot to play for here. The Blue Pride will be introduced tonight. And I look for a real good game, a return of, for Bob Proctor to Boonville coaching uh, after an absence of a few years. And that's going to be some incentive on that side of the field. So I think we're going to see a fine football game here tonight. We picked a good one to kick off with. Jack, one week ago, we saw Castle take on the Memorial Tigers in uh, uh, the Castle Jamboree. And uh, Memorial, a strong team. It looks like uh, Coach John Lighty is, uh, is going to have to prepare his team uh, a little better than he did for Memorial tonight. Well, I think that Memorial, what we saw in the Memorial team, Warren, is probably the best team in the city. Uh, just looking at them, I, we didn't get a chance to see the other four teams, but certainly no one in the Jamboree out here at Castle was on the field with them or capable of being on the field with them. But the Knights are a young ball club. Uh, they're going to come a long way. They had a few people out. Uh, Coach Lighty will get this ball club turned around. We'll be back with head coach John Lighty and his comments on the pregame show right after this commercial timeout. Thanks very much and hurry back. Hi, I'm Ken Hacker with Plaza Pharmacy. In the 22 years as a pharmacist in Newburgh, I've learned that service is very important to our patients. That's why, as your pharmacist, we stress service while offering competitive prices. Other drugstores try to fool you into believing that they always have the lowest prices. But I think you'll find that exceptional service and competitive prices are a standard at Plaza Pharmacy. So the next time you have a health care need or require medication, try us. You just might be pleasantly surprised. Picked out Allison's ring yet, Jim? Not yet, Dad. I'm confused. All these wild advertising claims like bargains and 50% off. Off of what? Well, that's why your mother and I always go back to the people we trust. Oh, you mean Dieters. They're a quality company with a wonderful reputation. Finest jewelers in town. No doubt about it. Aren't they too expensive for me? No. Their name carries a lot of prestige, but you don't pay extra for it. Jim, you can count on the folks at Dieters. A classic tradition. Bayer's Plumbing Incorporated can improve the look of your home by giving your bathroom or kitchen a makeover. With the time you spend in the bathtub or shower every day, wouldn't you love an enclosed shower or a luxurious whirlpool tub? Bayer's has the area's largest display of whirlpools. Improve the quality of your water with a water softener. Choose from many models. Think about a new sink, new faucets, a disposal, or a new look for the bathroom. Bayer sells, installs, and repairs all of your bathroom and kitchen needs. Call 853-2305 or look for Bayer's ad in Ameritech Pages Plus. Well, as you can see, the stands are primarily empty right now. We're about an hour before kickoff, but I guarantee you that these stands will be packed full of Castle and Boonville fans tonight. Joining us, head coach John Lighty. And John, uh, last week against Memorial, uh, we noticed late in the game you brought in a young junior quarterback uh, who seemed to get the, uh, the ball moving. Uh, any ideas of uh, making some changes in tonight's game? Well, not really, Warren. Uh, <clears throat> John Cobb did do a nice job in, uh, in the second quarter against Memorial, and uh, that was encouraging. But uh, Tom Merrill's our starting quarterback, and, and uh, he has had a good week of preparation. Um, his brother Gabe will be in the backfield at fullback. That'll, that'll be a boost to our running game. 
particular our inside game if again if everything goes right and, and uh, Gabe is an excellent receiver as well so uh, he will be a, a shot in the arm for our offense and uh, we looked at our tape you know we played decent at times and Memorial played pretty darn good for a jamboree type game so uh, it was kind of a combination of what they were doing right and in some plays, you know, we were we had alignment problems and, and what have you. But uh, you know, they beat us fair and square. And, and as you said earlier, you know, we got some we got some work to do and we got some holes to fill. But uh, that's why we got an eight game schedule to play too. Yeah. One more question before I turn this over to Jack. Um, got to say congratulations to the uh, Newburgh uh, American Legion baseball team. But you have to be happy to see that season over to uh, to get some players back. Well, they they've had an excellent year, and and uh, those young men are to be uh, commended in their coaching staff. Uh, They've had a long, uh, enjoyable summer, and, and uh, they represented the town and the area of Newburgh and Southern Indiana. I know we've got a mixed bag as far as players on that team, and uh, whenever you can gather good players from, from Castle District, the Harrison District, and Memorial, it sure makes, uh, makes it a little uh, easier to field a quality team. And, and, uh, but, but they did do an excellent job, and we're, but we're glad to have Matt Toon back in, in our ranks, and uh, again, he'll help our ball club in a lot of ways. Of course, Jack was around in uh, 1982 when uh, you won the uh, IHS AA, uh, AAA State Football Championship. You might have some uh, viewpoints on that, Jack. Well, tonight's going to be a lot of nostalgia here, Warren, uh, for Coach Lighty. Uh, of course, Coach Lighty's the only coach left off of that staff. He was the head coach then. Uh, those were some great times. So we're going to get a chance here later to see the players out here that represented Castle back then. And what's your feelings on this, Coach, uh, tonight? Well, it's just a feeling of, of pride, and it's, it'll be great to see a lot of the young guys that, uh, you know, it's been 10 quick years, but uh, most of them are coming back, and, and you know as a parent, uh, your son Andy was a part of that ball club, and uh, they were just a unique group. Uh, uh, the 81 team really got things rolling, and then uh, they went to the Final Four, and then the 82 team, uh, they went all the way. And uh, Whenever you can go 14-0, and 0 and, and uh, then that was 3A, which was the big class, and you beat people like Martinsville and, and Carmel and Hobart and uh, well that's just quite an accomplishment and uh, we're very proud of these kids and, and while well, they're young men now they're, they're no longer high school players but uh, uh, it's just going to bring back a lot of, of fond memories and uh, it just should be a, an excellent way to kick off the 1992 football season. Well when you mention young men uh... I couldn't help but notice in there, they're in there chowing down again. Uh, that's a trait that they always had. Uh, but I noticed that uh, we used to have shoulder pads under those jerseys that they're wearing. Uh, I, I think maybe a few of them put a pound or two on over the years. Right, I think so. I don't believe the jerseys have uh, shrunk any. I, I think the, the body might be a little bit uh, not quite as proportioned as well as it was uh, 10 years ago. But uh, uh, some of them look like they're uh, pretty fit and trim. And uh, again, it's going to be good to see a lot of them. And, Hopefully we'll get some, spend some time with them this evening and then after the game and then we're going to have a breakfast with them tomorrow morning. So uh, it's, hopefully it will be a, a, a good uh, 24 hours, let's say. Well, there's been a lot of work and preparation put into this. Your wife, Nancy, heading up the crew. Uh, my wife, Carolyn, uh, Mary Jo Huff, uh, Jeannie Brosmer, uh, Kay Fry. Those gals have spent a lot of time, as you and I know, for not being able to use the telephone for the last <laughs> month or two. And I think it's going to be a great evening. Well, you know, they have done an excellent job, and, and they've, they've done it out of the kindness of their heart and, you know, believing in Castle football, believing in young people, and, and uh, they're, they have done an outstanding job. And, and we're just glad that we have people like that who are interested in the program and interested in Castle High School, and, and it should be a, a fun evening for everyone. The main focus, though, is once all the hoopla is over with, let's get down to the head knocking and, and uh, take Boonville and, and, and go from there. But uh, we're going to have a, you know, a challenging evening on the gridiron, and, but hopefully we can gain some rewards there and then come back and, and enjoy things after the game and enjoy things tomorrow. Your opinions or thoughts on the game, John? Well, I don't like to make predictions, Jackson. I never have over the, over the years, but, uh, you know, it's... It's hard to really come out and make a bold prediction this early, uh, particularly with a team that's got a new coach. And you know, it, it's going to be, a, I'd say, a closer, and I'm going to say a low-scoring ball game. Normally, our games are low-scoring, and like last year, 14 to 12, uh, we had a chance. To, <coughs> excuse me, had a chance to win and didn't, um, or chance to tie and didn't quite get it in. So, um, again, I'm going to I'm going to go on the premise it'll be a low-scoring ball game, and, and as long as we win by one point, uh, I'll take it. That's right. Any victory is better than none at all. That's correct. 
I want to thank head coach uh, John Laddie for helping us out in the pregame show. We'll be back to uh, talk about the uh, return of the 82 uh, Castle Knight football team and also set up tonight's starting lineups right after this commercial timeout. All right, guys. Party Palace is Newburgh's complete party supplies outlet. We offer... Palace located in the Bustler Complex, Newburgh. For free delivery, call 853-8108. Your Warwick County Democratic team is committed to continued growth for Warwick County. Having completed a landfill with a life expectancy of over 75 years, paved 103 miles of county roads in just three years, plus acquired, built, and renovated the county annex without taxpayers' money. This November, the choice is clear. Vote for the team that gets the job done. Vote Democrat. These health tips are brought to you by Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic and Dr. Chris Gilkey, a member of the National Athletic Trainers Association. To relieve sudden lower back discomfort, try lying on a padded floor or similar surface with neck supported with a small pillow. Place another pillow under your knees. Keep your hips tilted backwards and your back against the floor. Hold this position for 5 to 10 minutes. If discomfort is persistent, contact your physician. These and more health tips are brought to you by Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic. Well, Jack, uh, 10 years has passed. Uh, the jerseys seem to be just a little bit tighter, but uh, it's great to reflect back to the 1982 uh, IHS AA, uh, AAA State Football Champion Knights. Well, there's no question about that, Warren. This has truly been billed as a night to remember, and I think it started off that way. Uh, really great-looking group of kids down there. Like you say, uh, I was having some fun with some of the kids uh, while they were eating their uh, meal that was provided uh, by the committee, and and I said, you know, I, I remember you kids, and I remember we used to play with shoulder pads up here. Uh, where did we put them underneath these jerseys? Uh, and you can see uh, a few uh, bellies hanging out there, but uh, a, an outstanding group of young people that's been alluded to here earlier pregame, uh, but they really were. They were an intelligent group. They were a strong group. Uh, they played together well. They, they really did everything that was necessary to be a winning team, and they won a state championship. And the only one in southern Indiana, Warren, so that's an accomplishment. Yeah, I, when you and I were in high school, uh, they had the mythical state championship, and it just didn't really carry the weight since they've added the, uh, the playoffs. And uh, with all the different divisions, it's just as important to be a state champion at the A level as it is at the 5 level these years. Oh, no question about that either. And uh, uh, we have a division separation here tonight with Boonville and Castle, and, and it really doesn't make any difference when you have a rivalry like this. But... But these kids played, it was a 3A then, that was the top, it's a 5A now, they're still up there, and, and they had to play some big teams. They had to play the Carmels, uh, Martinsville, to, to get there. Uh, uh, a tough road to hoe, but they were up for the occasion. You know, we hear a lot of uh, people say that Southern Indiana football is not to par with Northern Indiana football, and this is the one team that proved that myth wrong. If you had to point your finger at, two, at one impetus that led Castle to the state championship, had to be their conditioning and specifically their weight training program. They pioneered that in southern Indiana. No question about that either. Uh, Bill Bennett, who they introduced down here earlier, set up a tremendous weight program. He sold these kids uh, on the fact that if they were stronger and all things being equal, that they could win. And Coach Lighty backed Coach Bennett all the way. He did an outstanding job. This, this, he's a, he was a younger man then than he is today, but the kids related to him. I, I know having a son in the program, these guys really sweated. They used to have it back up in the in the uh, ceiling of the auditorium. It'd get to be about 100 degrees. They were up there pumping iron all summer long and loved it. You know, they hated to see the new weight room. These kids think that, uh, that now the kids don't have it near as tough, you know, that they're not as tough as they were. Let's turn our attention to tonight's game, Castle Knights uh, hosting cross-county rivals, the Boonville uh, Pioneers. And... Uh, some inexperienced players for Boonville coming into uh, the stadium tonight. Uh, Larry Mills never played football before. They had to recruit him out of the hallway. This is true. Uh, Bob Proctor told me that he's a basketball player. Uh, he went to him. Also, uh, Josh Madden, who we'll see it split uh, back tonight. Uh, Larry Mills will be playing one of the wideouts. Larry, or Josh hadn't played since he was in junior league. Bob Proctor is the master of motivation, Warren. 
Uh, this young man is an outstanding coach. He's back now for his second term uh, at, as head coach for Boonville. And they have a lot more enthusiasm. I was driving around Boonville the other day. There's a lot of signs up in the players' yards and a lot, a lot of enthusiasm going for the Pioneers. And, and he believes that, uh, that he's going to bring this team on. They are young. As you said, he's going to have a sophomore quarterback, a little bit untested there. We'll see if the, the nerves uh, play a part in these young players. One more item before we uh, go to a commercial break uh, for more of our uh, pregame show. They're going to run the run and shoot. Uh, obviously, trying to isolate one-on-one -on -one inexperienced receivers uh, if they get themselves into a, uh, uh, into a zone type of defense, which Cashel might throw at them. But run and shoot, you have four wide outs, one back in the backfield. That's probably the only way that they can play it. No, yeah, they can't match up, I don't think, across the line with Castle. Uh, uh, they're not quite that, to that point yet, but you're right. They're going to have to hope for some breaks, uh, some missed defensive assignments by the Castle Knights in order to make this work. We have a real treat coming up next. That's going to be 30 years of Castle football players doing the famous Castle Shuffle. We'll be back right after this commercial timeout. Come to Newburgh Cinemas and enjoy quality entertainment that's so close to home. It's the entertainment center in Warry County. Newburgh Cinemas has been bringing you first-rate movies for over 18 years. Thursday through Monday, adults are just $3.75. Children and senior citizens, only $2.50. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, all seats, only $2.50. And free refills on a bucket of hot popcorn all the time. Now playing, it's Christopher Columbus, rated PG-13. And a league of their own, rated PG. For showtimes, call Newburgh Cinemas at 853-6661. The newest college campus is in your home or at your office. Oakland City College introduces college courses on videotape. Accelerate the degree process, increase your job knowledge and ability, or just explore subjects you want to know more about, all through the convenience of videotape. And the support of faculty and fellow students is there when you need it. It's accessible, fully accredited, and at your fingertips. For more information about Oakland City College telecourses, call 1-800-737-5126. Thanks very much, and hurry back. Hi, I'm Ken Hacker with Plaza Pharmacy. In the 22 years as a pharmacist in Newburgh, I've learned that service is very important to our patients. That's why, as your pharmacist, we stress service while offering competitive prices. Other drugstores try to fool you into believing that they always have the lowest prices. But I think you'll find that exceptional service and competitive prices are a standard at Plaza Pharmacy. So the next time you have a health care need or require medication, try us. You just might be pleasantly surprised. Well, Bob Proctor leads his uh, 1992 Booneville Pioneers onto uh, the field here at Castle Stadium. And as you can see, the varsity squad of the Castle Knights lining up underneath their goalpost for the Castle Shuffle. Well, this is the famous Castle Shuffle, and, and these were the kids that originated the shuffle uh, back in 82. They're now going to pull around, as, as we can see on our camera here, they're breaking their tunnel down, and, well, it, it didn't work. I don't know what happened here. They were, we were told, I guess this championship team's going to do the shuffle by itself. Well, it's time for the butterflies uh, for the, uh, the pregame for the Castle Knights as they'll form around uh, head coach John Lighty along the sidelines. And... Uh, Got a run and shoot. John Laddy predicted a low scoring game. Run and shoot's known for wide open offense and high scoring. What do you think about that? Well, I think uh, Coach Laddy's uh, hoping his defensive people can keep pressure on this young quarterback. Uh, you know, it's tough to, to throw from the prone position, and he feels like if he can rush the quarterback, put pressure on him, take a little pressure off of his defensive backs, that he can keep this score down. Here comes the shuffle now, uh, Warren, if we pan there to it. Uh, this is the 1982 team doing the shuffle. Yeah, this is the 1982 shuffle. team doing the shuffle what they were known for before every game they'd come straight down the uh, field to the 50 yard line and break but see if they're 10 years older and probably 15 pounds heavier they're only going to go to the 30 and break that's probably about as far as the conditioning will allow them to do uh, it was suggested that they practice this and one of the other players said hey we're only going to get one shot we'll be back with uh, tonight's uh, opening kickoff right after this commercial timeout these health tips are brought to you by Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic and Dr. Chris Gilkey, a member of the National Athletic Trainers Association. Regardless of your age or activity level, initially an ankle sprain should be treated with the following manner called rice. Rest the injured ankle. Apply ice. Apply compression. And elevate the injured ankle. If symptoms persist or a fracture is suspected, contact your physician. 
Myers Plumbing Incorporated can improve the look of your home by giving your bathroom or kitchen a makeover. With the time you spend in the bathtub or shower every day, wouldn't you love an enclosed shower or a luxurious Whirlpool tub? Bears has the area's largest display of Whirlpools. Improve the quality of your water with a water softener. Choose from many models. Think about a new sink, new faucets, a disposal, or a new look for the bathroom. Bears sells, installs, and repairs all your bathroom and kitchen needs. Call 853-2305 or look for Bears ad in Ameritech Pages Plus. Castle wins the uh, coin toss and elects to receive. And back deep for Castle will be Chris Ware, Kyle Evers, and John Gillis. And I guess we have one heck of a, a foot in John Hilbert for Boonville, Jack. Yeah, no question, uh, Warren. He's considered one of the premier kickers in southern Indiana. He's a full-time soccer player. He uh, does this on the side. The kid pulls double duty for Boonville. And, He's an outstanding kicker, and you'll probably see him put it down. Or you see John Gill standing on the goal line, so that's where he's expecting them to kick to. Hilbert back about seven yards, awaiting the signal from the officials. And they blow the whistle, and we're about ready to get under the way with 1992 Castle football. High kick going down the right side, and the officials blowing their whistles. I do not see a I didn't flag see, on I didn't play. see anything there either. Maybe they didn't, weren't ready to start the clock yet. Uh, clock is stuck at uh, 12 minutes. So they did not punch the clock up. So we're going to kick it again. There will be no penalty on the play. Well, he's, he's uh, indicating offsides against Boonville. They're back in the Pioneers up five yards here, Warren. I didn't see it, so he must have. Oh, there was no flag. No, I didn't see it. Well, he's picking one up now. Maybe he couldn't get it out of his pocket over there. Well, that'll bring John Gillis out of his end zone up to about the six-yard line as Hilbert tees it up once again. And here we go. Second kickoff. High kickoff straight down the middle. It will be taken by Evers. And behind a wall of blockers. Gets into the secondary. One person to beat. No, he's going to be brought down right at about the 40-yard line, where it's going to be first and 10 for the Castle Knights. He's brought down by Steve Adams on uh, what could have been a touchdown-saving uh, tackle. Uh, he had some blue jerseys in front of him. A nice return by, uh, by Kyle to get this game underway for the Knights. Offensive line starting for Castle tonight. Jackson, Splitorf, Mason, Hoffman, and Garland will pick up the uh, receivers and backs after this down. Merrill sets up the Castle Knights in a I formation with a slot to the right, wide to the right. Short count, dive play off to Gorens. Off right tackle, picks up about four yards, and it'll be second down, and we'll call it seven. This is normal Castle football. Uh, Coach Lighty likes to test the line. The old Castle Blast play where they just uh, send the fullback out as a blocker and give it to the tailback. Uh, pure and simple, straight ahead football. Receiving core will be uh, Wilson, Evers, Ware, and Gillis. We have Gillis in the slot to the right. Two tight ends for Castle. I formation. Delay to Goins. Off right tackle again. They're going to pump that direction two times in a row. Nice pickup again of three more yards. That'll bring up three... Uh, uh, third down and about four to go should be a passing situation for the Castle Knights. Good tackle by Scott Connor there for uh, Boonville, uh, saving some additional yards. Uh, Castle just testing the line, uh, seeing who's going to control the line of scrimmage. In the backfield, John Gillis and uh, Michael Goins. Gillis the fullback and Goins the tailback. Slot to the left, wide to the left eye formation once again for Merrill. Calls out short signals, off to Goins again. Right tackle, three straight times. First he's going to be close to it. I believe he's got it. Got it by about a yard. First first down of the night for the Castle Knights. The ball will be marked at about the 47-yard line, we'll call it. They're now in Boonville territory. I'm sure Coach Lighty, uh, Warren's going to want to keep the ball in Michael Goins' hand as much as he can. Uh, if he gets a step on someone, he's gone. He's one of the fastest kids in uh, southern Indiana. Defensively for Boonville across the line, Scherzinger, Ungatime, Metzger, Wingy, and Posey. Merrill throwing the ball up in the air. First time to Avers in his hands and out incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Well, the little quick look in pass. Uh, he was open uh, just a little uh, pass, just a little low, and Kyle didn't handle it. Uh, Got to catch those. Uh, so that'll bring up a second and ten here. Linebacker core for the Pioneers will be Adams, Oaks, Connor, and Squires tonight. First time Castle has tested Boonville via the air tonight. Incomplete. So Merrill's 0 for 1. High formation, wide left, slot to the right. 
Fakes the first man to go on to the right side. Whistle blows. I don't see a flag. He turns the corner. Ridden out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. I'm not sure where that whistle came from. It apparently was not on the field because uh, the play's standing. Uh, just a little sweep play to the right. Again, trying to get Goins outside, hoping uh, that he can break containment because uh, he had set, certainly has the ability and the speed to uh, go all the way. Matt Toon will shuffle the play in from head coach John Lighty. We'll be seeing uh, Nossinger, Wilson, and Toon all night alternating at the uh, tight end position, bringing the plays in. Officials timeout. Probably going to uh, confer about the clock, possibly. I'm not sure what the... Now they're talking about the whistle. We heard a whistle, and the officials are complaining about that, and it must have uh, come out of the stands. Well, they're over-talking to uh, Coach Proctor, and they're over-talking to Coach Lighty, or uh, Coach Welling over here, uh, I don't know where it did come from, uh, Warren. We thought it was on the play there. Uh, came from the stands. Obviously from one side or the other, and they must feel it come from the other side because they're uh, they're talking over there. Ball resting just across the 40-yard line in, Castle, or in uh, Boonville territory. It's going to be third and about a yard and a half facing the Castle Knights. They're going to line up wide to the left with Evers. Gillis in the slot in the I formation. And off Goins. Once again, around the right end. Gets loose and ridden out at about the 25-yard line. They'll probably mark it at about the 26. Michael Michael, giving the uh, cameraman down there a little pad as, uh, as he dumps him, and they pick up uh, first down uh, on the sweep. Uh, good blocking downfield by uh, Gabe Merrill. They're glad to have him back, Warren. Uh, he's got some bruised ribs. Uh, they're just hoping he can go all the way here tonight. Second first down of the evening for Castle. The play brought in from the sideline. Gillis and Evers will be wide to the left. Now they're going to be the pro set. Hand off to Merrill. Off right tackle as once again Castle just tests that right side of the line. Time after time after time. Now they're coming over here behind uh, Craig Huffman and uh, Brent Garland, the uh, guard and tackle on this side. Of course, these are the two seniors uh, that are providing the leadership on this side of the line. And right now, Boonville hasn't found a way to stop this. Pickup of nine, make it second and one. Ball now inside the 20-yard line at about the 17. I formation, wide left, slot to the right. Hand off to Goins, second man, round right side. Penalty on the play as Goins ridden out of bounds, uh, just shy of the 30-yard line. And I believe that this probably will go against Castle. Looks like a holding uh, penalty on the Knights, and they're backing up. I think they... Of course, they don't tell in, uh, yeah, holding. Uh, so that'll set them back 10 yards. So instead of second and one, I'll back it up, and it'll be uh, second and 11 facing Castle. One of the things Bob Proctor told me, Warren, about this uh, uh, Castle team, he said, you know, they, they're basically a running team. You know that they're going to come at you with the run. But as you've said here, all the plays, they, they flank someone out wide. They run the slot. And he said you have to defend it, which makes you have to spread out this defense, which opens up a little bit of the inside game for Castle. He said, just as sure as you don't defend that play, they'll pick up a little quick hook and pass like they tried earlier and, uh, and tear you apart. So uh, they're, they're a lot tougher to defense than meets the eye. Pioneers elect to take the penalty as we anticipated. And it'll be second. We'll call it 12 facing Castle as they break their huddle. Senior quarterback Tom Merrill will set them up. Slot to the left, wide to the left. I formation once again. Fake run to the left, roll out to the right. Merrill intended for Matt Toon, slightly over his head. Ball goes out of bounds, incomplete pass. Well, he threw that a little high. He's, uh, he had that problem in the jamboree, as we saw last uh, Friday night. Uh, he's been working on it, uh, but he'll get back in uh, Toon. He played uh, uh, baseball this uh, summer, and I think he's looking just a little bit rusty here, but he'll bring it down and get back on that line here. One thing I've noticed about uh, Castle Stadium here is the field is extremely raked. It's a lot higher in the center than it is on the sidelines. And if you're used to passing in the pocket in the center of the field and you have to roll out to the right, the tendency is to overthrow your receiver. I formation, wide left and right this time. Merrill, straight back in the pocket, under pressure, throws out to the left side. Evers is there but can't get to the ball. Was almost intercepted by... Uh, uh, Boonville, it goes incomplete, and that brings up fourth down and 12. A little miscommunication there. Uh, I think uh, Tom thought that Kyle was going to go to the out, and Kyle was going to the inside, and they, just a little bit of misconnection. Again, the first game of the full game of the season, and these things will uh, iron out as we go along. 
uh, from where the line of scrimmage is, if they were to attempt a field goal here, it'd be about uh, 42, 43 yards. That's probably just a little out of Chris Ray's uh, range. So they're going to go for it. Four down territory for the Castle Knights. Three wide outs. Barrel rolls out to the right plenty of time. Passes to the right. Ball tipped up in the air. Intercepted. No, out of bounds is the pioneer. Uh, defensive man, Todd Strally, had his hands on it, but when he looked down, his feet were out of bounds. Well, Coach Proctor's going to be glad he was because he should have knocked that one down. They were going to get the ball back up here at the original line of scrimmage, and he lost about 10 yards on that had he intercepted it. So it'll be first and 10 for the Boonville Pioneers. Sean Burns, the quarterback for Boonville. He's a sophomore, uh, Warren. Uh, this is his first varsity, real varsity test, besides the Jamboree last week where he, I think, went 9 of 11. was very impressive, but, uh, you know, this, this is back to the big leagues, and they come out without a huddle. Burns will line him up. Wide to the right, wide to the left. Double slots both sides, one single back. Man in motion to the far side. Hand off to Aaron Squires. He's got a little bit of room off the left side. Good second effort. Drives across the... 30-yard line up to about the 34. We'll, we'll see uh, Boonville primarily all night in the one-back set or the uh, spread offense, some people call it, uh, or they'll run the uh, uh, pass and shoot. Uh, they're uh, testing uh, the fullback there. He's just coming off a broken leg, and they want to see if he's strong. Pick up a five yards in the play, second and five. Again, wides everywhere. Man in motion, far side again. Quick look in pass was intended but incomplete. And again, they had a little miscommunication uh, also as the uh, receiver, uh, Lauderdale, was not looking at the quarterback. Castle defense that one pretty well uh, out there. They, they had him covered well. Well, a penalty on the play. They have not uh, flipped over second down to third down yet. Talking to Castle. I didn't see the signal, but... I would imagine that Castle would probably take the penalty as I say that as they walk, as it, they off. walk it off. I was going to say hey, if they good. were going to decline it. That's, uh, <laughs> that's good uh, perception there. Moves the ball back to uh, the original line of scrimmage when they started uh, this series of downs. It'll be second and ten. Wides everywhere. Scherzinger, Mills, Madden, and Covell. Sweep to the right to Covell. Turns it up and is brought down after about a three-yard gain. It'll be third down and seven. Sean Cavell was the tailback last year uh, when uh, Coach Rogi was, was uh, the head coach. They ran out of the I formation primarily. Of course, they had Ben Wolf and Darren Ward uh, to support him, and he was real impressive. He's picked up about 21 pounds this year since last year, and he still hasn't lost any speed, Coach Proctor said. Third down and six yards to go. Wides right, double wides left, single back. Now they're going to go in motion to the short side. Quick look in pass right over the center, uh, intended and caught by. Oh, we don't have that number on the list. Uh, yes, that's Josh Madden. Uh, Josh is the uh, young man that hadn't played since junior league. Uh, Danny catches his first varsity pass. And it's good enough for the first down. The ball will be placed right at the 40 yard line. Castle with two first downs in uh, their initial drive, which came up shy deep in Castle territory. And now Boonville with their first first down situation. Scherzinger will be wide to this side. And now Madden in motion as Burns goes back to the pass. And oh. almost intercepted. John Gillis almost picked that one off. Uh, miscommunication again. Uh, ball was thrown to the outside and the receiver went to the inside. Goes as an incomplete pass. Bringing up second and ten for Boonville. Seven minutes and 45 seconds remaining in first quarter action here in Paradise, Indiana. Well, Beautiful this, football night, in it? <laughs> it sure is. It feels like October. Wides left and right, double slot, single back. Man in motion now. Quick pass over the right side. Again, incomplete. And that was intended for Sean Cavell, and he didn't see the ball coming. They're having a little bit of communications problem uh, still out here uh, Sophomore quarterback, I suspect Warren, he's got just a little few jitters out there. And uh, New receivers, even though they're seniors, have never, haven't played. Third and ten facing Boonville. Ball resting right on the 40-yard line in Castle territory. Or in Boonville territory, make that. 
Man in motion to the right. Burns over the middle. That was intended for Scherzinger. Just off the tip of his fingers, and that's going to bring up a punting situation for Boonville. Jay Bonnell defending on the play. Uh, the younger brother of Scott Bonnell, uh, who, of course, is the outstanding kicker for Indiana University, did a good defensive job there. Chris Ware will drop back deep for the Castle Knights, awaiting the Boonville punt. John Hilbert. Coach Proctor said he's untested as a punter. He's standing at about his 26-yard line. Awaiting the snap from center. Long count. Good snap. Bobbles the ball slightly. Gets off the kick, though. Low driving kick. Ware will watch the ball go over him. He'll pick it up, though, at his own 15-yard line. No blocking wall whatsoever, and he'll be brought down after a return of one yard. That'll be first and ten for the Castle Knights from their own 16-yard line. Nice punt. Castle obviously going after uh, the punter on that one. Only had one person back in Ware, which left him then... Uh, Kind of lonesome back there with all those white jerseys coming down, but uh, he fielded the ball and, and returned it. Uh, now the Knights take over first and 10. 7-14 remaining in first quarter action from Castle High School. No score in the ball game. Castle taking possession after uh, Boonville punted it away. They picked up one first down in their initial drive. This will be the second time that Castle will have control of the football tonight. I formation, double wides to the right. Hand off to Goins, once again off right tackle. And he'll punch forward for about a four-yard gain. Running the blast play again, staying, uh, staying inside, uh, just trying to drive Boonville off the uh, line of scrimmage. John Lighty may be setting something up. Uh, when you go uh, off tackle so many times, uh, they are not trapping. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a counter off a of fake. No, that, that's very possible. They, they have a lot of the misdirection stuff in the offense. This time they'll split the eye formation. Almost into a pro set. And off to the first man through, Gabe Merrill. He'll go off right guard. Again, testing the right side of the Boonville defense. And he'll pick up about uh, four more yards. It's going to be close to the first down. Let's see where they're going to mark the ball. I uh, believe they're going to, yeah. They, they say it's uh, first down. Third first down of the night for the Castle Knights. First in this possession. So far, Gabe Merrill's uh, ribs not showing any signs of hurting there uh, the way he's running the football. Greg Wilson brings the play in from the sideline as Castle breaks the huddle. Merrill will line them up wide to the left, slot to the left. Evers and Gillis. First man through. Merrill, this time off left guard. He'll pick up about three more yards. And it'll be second and seven. Well, they're trying the other side uh, this time. That's the first time we've seen them go to their left. Uh, they've got a couple of uh, new players over there in Splitteroff and uh, Jackson, and he's, now Coach Light's going to see how they uh, handle the Boonville. Matt Toon brings the play in this time. High formation once again with Merrill and Goins. Gillis to the right, Evers wide to the left. Hand off to Goins. This time they were anticipating that. Kind of a mix-up on the handoff, and it's going to be a loss of about four yards, and the ball will be placed back at about the 25. Coach Proctor sent his linebackers that time. Uh, they almost took the handoff. Uh, 26 in there, uh, Ben Oaks was sliced through over the guard position and almost took that handoff. Castle facing uh, a little bit more than 10 yards to go. Third down situation. Should see Merrill air it out here. Pro set, slot to the left, wide to the left with Gillis and Evers. Merrill, play action, looking downfield to his right, comes back to the short man, Merrill. He was there, but he couldn't hang on to it. Goes as an incomplete pass. It'll bring up a punting situation for Castle, fourth and ten. Nice play. Uh, Tom made a good read, found uh, Gabe open. Uh, Gabe just didn't catch a football. Michael Goins will handle the punting duties for Castle. Back deep for Boonville. It'll be Covell. Goins. Low, wobbling kick. And they give the reverse to Covell. He slips under no pressure. And the ball is touched to the ground, just shy of the 45-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 from Boonville from their 44. So they actually uh, pick up about six yards on the transition. Craig Tibbetts, though, wasn't fooled. He stayed home uh, 
uh, was in position to make the tackle. He and Rob Dieters both were there. Uh, nice job of coverage there on the reverse. You don't see much of that in high school football anymore. Of course, Bob Proctor is known to go to the to the unknown, to the surprise. Pioneers will come out of their huddle on the sideline, and they're going to line up immediately. We'll be back with more high school football action right after this commercial timeout. The average family of four will spend as much eating out at their favorite restaurant as they would enjoying two full months of family entertainment from Century Cable. Of course, we're not asking you to stop eating out, but to consider the tremendous value of subscribing to Century Cable. Call 853-2935. Thanks very much and hurry back. Hi, I'm Ken Hacker with Plaza Pharmacy. In the 22 years as a pharmacist in Newburgh, I've learned that service is very important to our patients. That's why, as your pharmacist, we stress service while offering competitive prices. Other drugstores try to fool you into believing that they always have the lowest prices. But I think you'll find that exceptional service and competitive prices are a standard at Plaza Pharmacy. So the next time you have a health care need or require medication, try us. You just might be pleasantly surprised. Out of the shotgun, shovel to Cobell, wide open, and he gets some yardage down close to first down territory. He'll be a couple of yards shy. That's going to bring up third and one facing the Boonville Pioneers. Boonville going to the shotgun now the last couple of plays, uh, trying to see if they can't, uh, I think, probably give Wells a little more ch uh, chance to look downfield. That time they tried this little shuttle pass. The old Wisconsin shuttle the pass. old Wisconsin shuttle pass. Three minutes, 40 seconds remaining in first quarter action. No score. This time it'll be a snap from center. Wide to the right, slot to the right, eye formation. First time we've seen that uh, for uh, Boonville. Cavell, the tailback, second man through, stacked up at the line of scrimmage, falls forward for a gain of about a yard and a half. They'll be a little bit shy, I believe, at the first down, but it really depends upon where the officials mark it. They're going to they're gonna measure. We don't have the best angle on it here, but I'd say that it looks like about a half a ball over. They may have I was going to say, I believe he's got it. I believe he's got it. Chain gang coming out on the field. Apparently, Coach Proctor is going to go to the I formation when he needs the short yardage. And, and they, they did pick it up. by about three inches. It'll be first and ten for Boonville. Their second uh, first down situation of the evening. One in the first possession, now one here. Pioneers will go back to the single back, double slots, wide left and right. Man in motion coming to the far side as Burns rolls out to the right, drops the ball. That was not thrown, and it looks no, like Castle no, he has dropped recovered it. I believe it. Castle's got that. We got a new defensive change in there. Bob Grant uh, is in for Castle, number 46, and the Knights do recover. First turnover of the evening. And that will be charged as a fumble by Sean Burns. And Castle recovers the ball at the 49-yard line in their territory. Great position. Young man just dropped the football as he was trying to uh, roll to his uh, left and throw the throw downfield. Good it, awareness by the Knights. It'll be the Knights' third possession here in the first quarter. We come down, ticking off under three minutes. Wide to the right, slot to the right eye formation for the Knights. Merrill. Play action, reverse to Gillis, and he'll turn it back upfield. He'll pick up about five yards as the officials blow the whistles and call the play dead. And it'll be second and five. Well, they run a little counter play. They've been running, uh, as you said a while ago, setting something up here, uh, Warren. Uh, they've been running the blast continuously to this right side. They, they fake that, come back with a little uh, counter with John Gillis. John's only about 75%. He's got an ankle injury uh, from baseball that he still hasn't recovered from. That was defensed well by John uh, Scherzinger. Yes. Turned, uh, turned Goins back in. Uh, picked up a nice uh, gain, though, five yards. Second and five facing the Knights. And we'll have Chris Ware wide to the right. Gillis in the slot to the right. And a mix-up as Merrill wanted to hand the ball off to Goins and couldn't get it. Had the foresight to hang on to the ball. He'll take the loss. Could have been a whole lot worse. There could have been a fumble on that play. Again, uh, Boonville coming with uh, everybody but the band. Uh, 
Bob Proctor gambling a little bit uh, on defense, and it paid off. Third and 14, minutes 40, and counting, remaining in first quarter action. As you see, nothing, nothing on the scoreboard. This is exactly what John Lighty predicted, a low-scoring game. And that's what we're getting so far. I formation, wide left and right. Where to the left? Gillis to the right. Merrill back in the pocket. Immense pressure. He's going to be snowed under inside the 35-yard line. They'll mark it at about the 34, and that's going to bring up a punting situation for Castle. Number 62, Robert Mexter made that tackle. A six-foot, 194-pound uh, uh, senior. He just uh, blitzed in there and uh, and threw Merrill for quite a loss. Castle unable to capitalize on the turnover by Boonville. And if anything, the momentum has kind of shifted in Boonville's favor right here. Goins back. Good snap. Takes a lot of time. Low driving kick. Driving Boonville back inside the 30. They're going to have to watch that ball as it's going to be down inside the 20-yard line. That'll be first and 10 for Boonville. I thought possibly that Boonville had a, an opportunity to uh, pick up another three or four or five yards on the exchange. And they find themselves backed up deep in their territory at the 20-yard line. Doug Hurt, the uh, uh, sophomore number 59, is in doing the long snap for uh, John Lighty. Uh, John said in practice he's been looking uh, real good at this. So one of the first first views that we've had of the, the real prominent sophomore group that uh, Castle has coming on. If you're looking at your TV, you don't see an offense there for Boonville. They're actually <laughs> huddling at the exchange of possession over on the sideline with uh, Bob Proctor and running out uh, into a set position. They'll be wide to the left, end to the right, slots both right and left. Out of the shotgun this time. Man in motion to the far side. Burns looking to pass to the right side over the center. Intended. Ooh. Oh. He had Bon LB. He had nothing but goal line in his eyesight, and it goes incomplete. Pass was intended for Mason Lee. Hit him in the shoulder pads, and it goes incomplete, second and ten. Well, he had wide open spaces, as you said. Just uh, the ball hit him on the shoulder pads. Uh, he had a step on Bonnell, and, of course, Kyle Evers was back there, but he might have been going to the races. Second and ten from the Boonville 20-yard line. As Sean Burns lines up the Pioneers, wide left and right. Slot on the right side now in motion to the near side. Quick look in. Intended for Larry Mills, and I have the first uh, completion for Boonville and the first catch for Larry Mills because he's never played football. That's his first varsity before. catch. <laughs> Tackle on the play by John Gillis. But and it was good enough for the first down. Picks up 11 yards. Ball will be marked just across the 30-yard line at the 31. And that is the third first down for Boonville in tonight's game. Gabe Merrill now coming in to play some defense over at the cornerback position. Clock ticking down to the end of the first quarter of action. With the score, nothing, nothing. We'll be back after this commercial timeout. High school football is brought to you by Warwick Cable Advertising and Gilkey Chiropractic. Here at Suburban Tire, we've had fabulous results with Warwick Cable Advertising. Not only are their rates very competitive, their staff is very knowledgeable, helpful, and not to mention fun. The cost of... <laughs> Push it. Slow down, don't I? And not only with that, not to mention the time. <laughs> These health tips are brought to you by Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic and Dr. Chris Gilkey, a member of the National Athletic Trainers Association. To relieve sudden lower back discomfort, try lying on a padded floor or similar surface with neck supported with a small pillow. Place another pillow under your knees. Keep your hips tilted backwards and your back against the floor. Hold this position for 5 to 10 minutes. If discomfort is persistent, contact your physician. These and more health tips are brought to you by Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic. Getting ready for second quarter action here at Castle High School. Score nothing, nothing. For just joining us, Boonville with possession of the ball. It'll be first and ten for the Pioneers from their own 30-yard line. Hand off to Cobell, who scoots off uh, right tackle. Good second effort. Brings him up close to the first down marker. The ball will be marked shy of the 40-yard line, and it'll be second and about one and a half yards to go. Jay Bonnell moved up to make that tackle. Uh, Boonville begin to get a little confidence in their blocking now. Uh, Bob Proctor picking up some yards on the ground. Uh, wasn't expected. I think we've seen a, a, a very slight momentum switch in favor of uh, Boonville. After right. the turnover, they played tremendous defense, forcing Castle back 
24 yards in the opposite direction. Double wide to the left this time, out of the eye formation with the tight end on the right. Hand off Carvel, he'll test the left side, almost gets loose, falls across enough for the first down, plus about four extra yards. Ball will be marked at the 45-yard line, where it'll be first and 10. Well, Brent Garland uh, moved up to, to make the stop. Uh, Boonville beginning to consistently pick up a few yards here against the Knights. Something to look forward to following the game, the Castle Player of the Game. Castle Player of the Game is sponsored by Gilkey Chiropractic. Donation will be made to the Area Special Olympics in the name of uh, our player of the game by Dr. Chris Gilkey of Gilkey Chiropractic. Hand off to the slot back coming around the right side. There is nowhere to go as that is smelled out and put to bed. John Gillis moved up and made a great tackle. He forced a fumble, and Castle has recovered. A great hit there by uh, John Gillis, uh, the senior uh, two-year uh, letterman back there. Second turnover of the evening for Boonville. Let's we'll see if the Knights can capitalize on this one a little bit better than they did the initial turnover. To turn that momentum around, they're going to need to do something here, uh, Warren. Uh, as you said, the momentum will begin to shift, but maybe this turnover will turn the emphasis back to the Knights. Absolutely no win tonight. Beautiful evening for football. If you're not here, shame on you. <laughs> First and ten for the Castle Knights. Wide left, slot left, eye formation. Goins off. No, it's going to be a fake and a keeper by Tom Merrill. I don't know whether that was a design play or a mix-up. No, that's a mix-up in the backfield. Uh, Tom just uh, tucked it in. He didn't have a clean handoff. And he's a senior, uh, second-year quarterback, and that's a good move on his part to save the fumble. Second quarter action, 10 minutes, 26 seconds remaining. And a second stanza here. The play shuttled in from the sideline. Chris Ware now going in at fullback, uh, replacing Gabe uh, Merrill. Merrill suffering from bruised ribs, did not play in the Jamboree last week. One lone back, slot to the left, wide left and right. As Merrill looks to the left side, and it's the a flea, flea flicker. flicker. And, and he's gone. To Ware. Nobody there, one man to beat. Let's see if he gets it. Touchdown. <laughs> First touchdown of 1992 <laughs> for the Castle Knights. And that was a 55-yard pass play. Well, you've got to have a lot of happy 82 team uh, members watching that. I was kind of hoping at some point in time they would pull the flea flicker. Of course, everybody that's a Castle fan knows that's the way we basically won a state championship was the old Mike Davis to Deion Chester with the pitch to David Brosmer. And I know an ex-quarterback sitting over here on our left who's helping spot for Coach Lowdy. Uh, my son, Andy Keller, is living that one up because the flea flicker's back. Pass play completed for 55 yards and the score. At the 9.55 mark of the second quarter, Castle Knights take a 6-0 lead. And Chris Ray will handle the PAT duties. Waiting to snap from center. There it is. There's the place. The kick. It's up. And it is good. With 9.55 remaining in second quarter action, Castle takes a 7-0 lead. We'll be back after this commercial timeout. Brought to you by Warwick County Democratic Team and Newburgh Cinema. Warwick County Democratic Team has much to be proud of. The renovated Chandler Park site, 103 miles of repaved county roads, and substantial economic development, including the Deaconess Gateway Health Center. This November, help us continue to improve our quality of life. Vote for the team that gets the job done. Vote Democrat. Come to Newburgh Cinemas and enjoy quality entertainment that's so close to home. It's the entertainment center in Warry County. Newburgh Cinemas has been bringing you first-rate movies for over 18 years. Thursday through Monday, adults are just $3.75. Children and senior citizens, only $2.50. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, all seats, only $2.50. And free refills on a bucket of hot popcorn all the time. Now playing, it's Christopher Columbus, rated PG-13. And a league of their own, rated PG. For showtimes, call Newburgh Cinemas at 853-6661. Scoring drive, Jack, was what? Three plays. Three plays. And 55 yards. Scoring at the 9.55 mark of the second quarter. Castle takes the lead, 7-0. But more important to Castle fans, and especially these returning state championships team, is the return of the flea flicker successfully. Madden and Cavell awaiting the... Kickoff by Castle. It'll go to Carvel at his own 12-yard line. He's got the wall. Heads straight up the middle. Cannot penetrate that. Dives across the 30-yard line. A return of about 18 yards. 
Ball will be placed at the 31. It will be first and 10 for Boonville. It's a trail 7-0. Chris Ray, the uh, place kicker, is uh, doing the kickoff duties here this year for the Castle Knights. He's the senior place kicker. Sophomore quarterback, Sean Burns, finds himself trailing by seven points. Breaks the huddle. It's the first time that they've huddled after an exchange. And they're going to have trips to the right this time. Out of the shotgun. Roll out to the right. Has a man open. on the, And it's oh. almost intercepted. Evers was there. Overthrown pass. And he had his hands on it but couldn't hold on. Well defensed. Uh, the trips... Uh, Bob Proctor obviously trying to get back and return this uh, after the break and the touchdown, but the Knights trying to get his momentum back. Ball badly overthrown, and Kyle Evers almost picked that one off. Hit him on the arms. We I do mean, have a flag has... on the play at Warren. Might signify holding. They're calling uh, for Castle. I would think that would probably be a hold, and uh, can't second guess it. Last time I thought that they uh, would uh, decline the penalty, and they took it. This time they are going to take the penalty. Yeah, they probably would take that one. That's a 10-yard penalty, and that moves them back to the 20-yard line. That'll be second and 20. Awaiting the Boonville Pioneers. Evers had hit him in the, uh, in the arms. So right. I mean, if he could have gotten his hands right. on it, it would have been the interception. Nice effort, defensive effort. Double wise to the right. Man in motion now to the left side. Burns. Over the middle, completed for about a five-yard pickup. It'll be second and about 15. Chris Weller over there on the uh, defensive play for Castle, along with uh, Tom McLean, who has come in uh, five foot ten, 220-pound uh, junior. A little more than nine minutes remaining in second uh, quarter action here. Seven nothing. Castle Knights lead this one. Double wides to the right. Man in motion out of the far side. They have three wide receivers over that direction. They could come back to the left this time, and it's completed. And a man loose in the secondary. One man to beat. He'll be ridden out of bounds into Castle territory. That will pick up the first down. And they're going to have a late hit over there on Kyle Evers. Uh, from our perspective, it's hard to tell, Warren, but it looked like the ball carrier was continuing to run down the sidelines. We couldn't tell if he's out of bounds or not. But uh, I, didn't, I didn't hear a, a whistle, but uh, they're going to tack on, I think, uh, 15 yards for a personal foul and a late hit. Pass was completed to uh, the H-back, Aaron Squires, as they had three wides to the right, diverting uh, Castle's defensive attention uh, to the near side of the field. And Squires was able to uh, almost uh, uh, evade any defensive pressure. And it was as if it were a screen pass, but with no blocking wall. And right. uh, Castle really confused. Well, I think uh, all the direction and uh, misdirection that uh, Coach Proctor's running at them has got the secondary just a little confused. I, I've been watching here as, as they line up, and, and our secondary seems to have just a little bit of hesitation of who's, who's got wh who or what, uh, playing zone, and some it look like they're also playing some man. But uh, they just picked that one up uh, and did a, a good job with it, and Aaron Squires, after he got the football, rambled down the sideline. Well, the Pioneers are backing up. Obviously, the penalty is going to go against Boonville after the 32-yard pickup. It'll be good enough for the first down because the penalty occurred after the play was dead. I was going to say, it must have been, it was not a late hit then. It was uh, against Boonville. It'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers. Ball will be marked inside Boonville territory at about the 49-yard line. Well, now they're going to move it all the way back, and we're facing a first and 25. So they're going to... Dead ball foul. Yeah, the, the, the line, foul. line of scrimmage, when the foul occurred, uh, just shy of the 50-yard line where uh, Squires was obviously ridden out of bounds that we didn't pick up. I had him out of bounds uh, deeper into Castle mm -hmm. territory, and they mark off the 15-yard uh, penalty from that point. So now it's first and 25 for uh, the Boonville Pioneers. slots with one to the near side. Quick pass on the right side. It's complete. It'll be a pickup of about five yards, and that's it. And it'll be second, and now about 21. Bob, Bob Grant over on the uh, defensive play for uh, the Castle Knights. Uh, 
Proctor's running everybody to one side and coming back uh, to the opposite side. Uh, and he's able to find that man on that little look-in uh, uh, with a lot of success here in the last couple of plays. Sean Lauderdale took the completion. Now we have timeout on the field. We'll keep it here. Eight minutes and 32 seconds remaining in second quarter action. And uh, we're expecting some uh, guests from the 82 uh, Castle football squad at halftime. Yeah, we're going to hope to talk to uh, Mike Davis and uh, David Brosmer, uh, who hopefully will be up here in the booth with us and get a little insight into their feeling and be interesting to see their uh, opinion of that flea flicker since they were two of the three principals on the 82 team to complete that in the semi-state and also in the, in the state championship game. It was an exciting play. That, was, that, that team made it famous, so uh, it's been in the playbook ever since. And it couldn't have come at a more opportune time for the Knights, who were beginning to lose a little momentum. Knights getting some instruction. John Laddie elects to stay on the sideline. Yeah, Coach Hawkins is the defensive coordinator for uh, Coach Laddie, and he normally handles the uh, timeouts on defense. Oh, we had to go to a tape change there, and uh, while we were away, the pass was intended uh, for Aaron Squires. It was a little uh, flanker pass, and it was uh, smelled out, and it's going to be now fourth down and seven yards to go. Yeah, the Pioneers tried to set up a screen over there, and uh, they had some blockers out there, but uh, Squires didn't handle the pass. Back is Chris Ware uh, to field this punt. Boonville electing to punt the ball away. John Hilbert also handles place kicking duty awaiting the snap long count low snap picks it up puts his foot into it booming low driving kick taken by where's no he'll watch it it'll go into the end zone it'll be a touchback and they'll bring it out to the 20 where it'll be first and 10 for the castle knights good decision by chris ware that time uh, warren let that ball go on into the end zone instead of trying to field it 735 remaining until halftime castle still with the seven point lead as most of this ball game has been fought uh, uh, between the uh, the 20-yard line so far. Well, that's what John Lighty told us in the pregame uh, that he anticipated a low-scoring uh, defensive football game. <laughs> Boonville using a four-man front defensively. Handoff, first man through. Having some trouble fighting his way up for a gain of about two yards. That was Gabe Merrill. Coach Proctor likes to run the even front or the four-man line a lot. Uh, he will move up on occasion to what resembles a wide tackle six by walking these corners up. But uh, they, they basically like that four-man front with the four linebackers. Beautiful night for football tonight at Castle High School. Temperature, I would say, in the upper 60s. Clear. I formation, wide right, handoff, Goins hit at the line of scrimmage, but uh, works his way through, picks up another three yards. Ball be marked just shy of the 25-yard line. That time they were trying a little bit of a delay in there. Uh, didn't fool uh, the Pioneers, though. Might look for a draw here. Deep in your territory, may not want to air it out. I formation. Evers wide to the right. Gillis on and end around. Turns it upfield. Hit right at the line of scrimmage as you saw a mouthpiece fly out of that. Hard hit. No that was gain hard. on the play. It'll be fourth and five. That, that was a hard hit there. Uh, he was Marcus Duncan uh, come up and delivered a blow on John Gillis. And he had walked back about five yards and pick up his mouthpiece. So that'll be the second putt of the evening for Castle. Michael Goins will be standing right at about his own 11-yard line. Carvel back deep. Plenty of time, low, end over end kick. It'll hit right at the 50-yard line as Boonville will watch it bounce down inside the 40-yard line. Ball be marked at about the 38. Where Boonville will take over first and 10 with 5.43 to go in second quarter action. Normally Castle uses it. Last year was John Gillis uh, handling punting duties, but with John's bad ankle, he's not able. It does hurt every time that he makes contact with the ball, so Michael Goins is handling the punting duties. 
And that gives them a little extra dimension back there, Warren, if they decide to go try something tricky, they've got a tailback uh, handling the football. Major difference in this game, a flea flicker, 55-yard touchdown pass for Castle, which gives them the seven-point lead right now, 7 nothing. Double slots wide to the right. Cavell in a deep uh, motion, takes the handoff, turns the corner, flag on the play. He'll be ridden out of bounds shy of the 50-yard line, and I'm sure that this penalty will go against Boonville. It'll be a motion. Stops the clock with 5.23. Yeah, illegal motion. Nice crowd on hand tonight for the season opener for the Castle Knights. I think Tomorrow, Castle Soccer will carry that lie or uh, tape delay. That's going to be New Albany versus Castle, seen right here on Channel 23, starting at 10:30 p.m. tomorrow night. Could be covering a lot of sports all year long. Swimming, soccer. It's going to be enjoyable and some of the girl sports. All brought to you by Warwick Cable Advertising. First and 15 facing the Pioneers. Double slots, double wides. Cavell in motion. They fake that, and they've got an end around. Going around the left side. Turns the corner and gets loose and ridden out of bounds. Let's see where they mark it. He actually hit the, uh, the yardstick that he needed to hit for the first down but I believe they're going to mark it shy. He's marking it about three yards, two yards shy. Josh Madden with about a 14-yard scamper. That's going to be three yards shy of the first down. Second and three facing the Pioneers. Once again, one slot back, or two slots. Cavell in motion. He'll take the handoff off right tackle, and Castle smells that. He'll pick up about one yard. It's going to be third and two, we'll call it. John Sanders is in playing the uh, middle linebacker for Castle. Uh, the young man is uh, only uh, five foot nine, 155 pounds. He's a junior, but he came up and delivered a, a good, solid tackle. Ball be placed on the right hash marks at about the 42-yard line. As Todd Miller, the center, gets over the ball. Sean Burris, the quarterback, calling the signals. And they move the ball, and Castle jumps on that, forcing the uh, encroachment against Boonville. They'll take the penalty, and they'll back him up five more yards, and it'll be third and eight. Well, that time, uh, they were getting a lot, officials were getting a lot of help on that one down there, uh, even up here. Uh, Coach Mark Williamson sitting here beside of us was trying to help the official call that one. Uh, so instead of third and three, it's going to be third and eight on the miscue. Boonville breaks the huddle. Burns will set him up, double wide to the right, slot to the left, one H back out of the shotgun. Oh, almost a high snap. Burns on a route right down the right sideline pass intended for Josh Madden as you can see out of his hands stops the clock at 409 to go in second quarter and that's going to bring up a fourth and eight situation for Boonville and I would imagine they will elect to punt the ball away we have an illegal uh, motion against Boonville again so they're going to talk to Castle and like you say I have a feeling that'll be turned down they didn't have to talk very long on that one and it is declined John, John Burns looking for some direction from the sideline. And finally, Coach Bob Proctor makes the decision to send in the punting team. John Hilbert trots onto the field. He'll step up to the huddle and just basically tell them what count. But apparently, a man short, he's holding up his hand out there for some reason. Well, they're going to have to do something here or else they're going to get a delay of game called as they shuffle the extra player onto the field. And they finally break. The official threw the flag. He was looking at his watch up back there the whole time. Too much time, as it was anticipated. And they'll move the ball five yards back. And instead of uh, John Hilbert punting from about his own 30, he'll punt from his own 25. That just basically gave the Knights an extra five yards. Yeah, Chris Ware moves up about the 27, 28-yard line. 
This time, plenty of time to get the playoff, awaiting the snap. Good snap. Hilbert puts his foot into a high kick, will not travel very far, lands inside the 35 and basically dies right at that point. The ball will be down at about the 33-yard line, and Castle will take over, first and 10. Three minutes and 58 seconds left here in the second quarter with the Knights leading seven to nothing. Uh, and they go back to work on the offense as Tom Merrill goes back out on the field. Under four minutes now remaining in the second quarter, headed towards halftime. Tonight's first ever Warwick Cable Advertising broadcast of Castle High School football. Pro set, slot to the right, wide to the right. They'll hand off to Gabe Merrill. Merrill will pick up about six or seven yards on the dive play. And it'll be second, and we'll call it five. I know one thing, uh, Warren, on defense with the Boonville Pioneers. Uh, they do a lot of swarm tackling. There's a lot of people around the ball. It's hard to distinguish a lot of times who, who gets the initial hit because they're having three and four people on each tackle, and Pro Coach Proctor likes to see that. Knights will break the huddle. High formation with Merrill and Goins. Gillis in the slot and Evers wide to the right. Handoff goes to Goins. Second man through on the right side. And he'll pick up about four more yards. It'll be shy of the first down marker. That'll be third and short. And he's running over there behind uh, sophomore tackle Patrick Mays, who's six foot two, 210 pounds. And Patrick, the younger brother of Aaron Mays, and he's getting a little bit of time here. Of course, this week they don't have a reserve game, so they can play all the quarters that they want to. Patrick, an outstanding prospect here. Third and two facing the Castle Knights as they break their huddle. The perfect scoring opportunity for Castle right before halftime. Eye formation. First man through. Merrill, second effort, carries him, I believe, enough for the first down. The ball will be marked just shy of the 45-yard line. First down, says the referee. Coming pretty close now to a two-minute drill situation for Castle. Clock stopped at 2.37 as they advance the, the chains. And the officials will wind the clock down. Don't like to take a timeout. And the Knights elect to take a timeout with 2.37 remaining in the second quarter with Castle on top 7-0. And uh, trying to put together a drive here to score before uh, halftime. And I would imagine that uh, John Lighty has... Uh, uh, some fairly intricate uh, uh, designs for a two-minute drill. Well, don't be surprised to see the flea flicker again. Uh, it worked once. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time they've ever come back to it a second time in the game. Uh, a few years ago against Memorial uh, in 82, as a matter of fact, uh, they ran it, uh, actually ran it to the tight end, Joe Huff. But uh, they're uh, talking things over. Uh, I'm sure John likes to put one more score up before halftime. I would think that... Uh, at this point of the ball game, they would probably want to, to control the ball as much as possible until they can maybe get 20 yards out of their own uh, uh, end of the field. What other trick plays do they have besides the uh, the flea flicker? Well, that primarily is the, the biggest trick play in Castle's history. Uh, they do a lot of uh, counter stuff. Coach Lighty likes the draw play a lot in the uh, uh, obvious passing situations. Uh, basically, they don't, they don't run a lot of fancy stuff. They have a halfback pass in the playbook? Freshman run it. Fake to Goins, play action. Pass was intended for Gabe Merrill. Let's see if he hung on to it. Official's going to mark it there. It's yes, going to be did. a completion. It'll be a pickup of about three yards only. And it'll be third and seven. He clock didn't. winding down to 222. Yeah, he did not get out of bounds, so the clock's still running. Just about everything that you're going to see as far as patterns right now will be down and outs. But sometimes when uh, Boonville is looking for that, they might sneak uh, a post pattern in. Well, they, like to, they do like to go with the post pattern. Castle will split the backfield into a pro set slot to the right. Hand off to Gabe Merrill, off right tackle. They'll stand him up and throw him back. The forward movement will take the ball across the 50-yard line into Boonville territory. They should mark it at about the 49. It'll be third and about four. Again, about four Boonville players in on the stop. Uh, gang tackling. Clock still ticking down, a minute 37 on the clock. I think that Castle may elect to utilize their two remaining timeouts between now and the end of the second quarter. Again, pro set, slot to the right, fake the pitch back. 
handoff to Merrill on a misdirection play, but Boonville smells that one out. No gain on the play, and now Castle's facing fourth and about four. A little inside counter play, uh, but they just didn't fool that linebacker at all. He stepped up and made a nice hit. Well, Castle's going to use uh, one of their two remaining timeouts. That'll freeze the clock at a, at a minute 16. Ball's going to be placed inside the 50-yard line, just barely into Boonville territory on the 49. And when they get out of this timeout, they're going to be facing fourth down at about four yards. Obviously, one of those uh, in-between type of situations where you might elect to, uh, to look at the run or play action pass. I think he's going to punt. He uh, still has Michael Goins on the field, and uh, we have some of the specialty team, Coach Welling out there, who heads the specialty teams, is out talking uh, to him. I believe uh, it looks like that they're going to they're going to punt. Yeah, they are because there's Doug Hart, the long snapper, the sophomore. It's the safest thing to do. You want to yeah. protect that seven nothing lead. You certainly don't want to uh, come up shy on the first down attempt and give uh, Boonville uh, a 50 yard shot at uh, scoring before halftime. Well, when you're playing against a, a passing team with the uh, offense that they've got, they can strike them any place. Madden and Covell back deep for Boonville, awaiting the Goins punt. And uh, Goins has to scrape that ball up off the floor. And it'll be a low driving kick. It'll be taken by Covell. And he gets past two men. And the third one will bring him down across the 30-yard line at about the 31, where the Pioneers will have a minute six to work with on the clock. You know, he made a nice pickup of that one. Uh, a little dangerous down there. Uh, the ball was rolling sideways, not end over end, but he picked it up and, and made a nice return out of it. John Lighty walking about three steps onto the field, holding up one finger. That's the defensive set for Castle. Obviously, they're going to go into a prevent here. As you can see, their free safety and, and safety are about a good 11 or 12 yards off the ball. Shotgun for Burns. Throws to the right side, and it is completed to Josh Madden, and he'll fall back towards the original line of scrimmage, negating what could have been a nine-yard pickup, and instead it'll be about uh, seven yards. 47 seconds remaining in the second quarter. As you can see, Castle Knights leading this one 7 nothing. Timeout by the Boonville Pioneers. Pioneers want to talk it over. Coach Chuck Hawkins talking to his defense down here on the sidelines. Uh, Be interesting to see. Obviously, he'll go into the prevent defense here. Uh, be interesting to see how these linemen come off there to see if they go as an all-out blitz uh, type thing uh, uh, to put pressure on uh, Sean. Uh, uh, since he is a sophomore, Sean Burns. It's going to force Boonville to probably throw under the coverage and uh, hope that uh, maybe a miracle can happen and they can score before halftime. Well, we got the dynamic duo joining us up here uh, in the bench. Uh, the two, two of the three principals in the famous Castle uh, Flea Flicker will join us here in a few minutes at halftime. Well, that'll end the timeout. 47 seconds remaining. And first half action here. Castle High School. Castle back in a prevent defense. Out of the shotgun. Covell now in motion to the right side. They'll have trips over there. He'll throw along the left side. He's got a man open, and it is complete down inside the 25-yard line, complete to Jason Tremper. And I was wondering if that was a snake in the grass play. I had no idea where he came from. I don't know either, but he sure snuck down there. Bob Grant made a touchdown-saving tackle, but he sure got behind the castle's defense. And here comes uh, Jay Bonnell back in, uh, Grant coming off. 39, oh, close. 39 seconds remaining, and they are now well within range of John Hilbert's toe. Again, shotgun, double wide to the right, double wide to the left. Burns looking to the right side over the middle, and it's incomplete, almost intercepted. Uh, Kyle Evers had a shot at that one and almost made the most of it. Castle putting some pressure on him. As a matter of fact, on the long pass, uh, they dumped him right as he threw the ball, and this time uh, Craig Hoffman back in there uh, putting a lot of pressure on him, but the young man delivered the football. Incomplete pass stops the clock at 33 seconds. As Sean Lauderdale brings the play in for Bob Proctor, he'll line up wide to the left. They'll have trips to the right this time with one H back. Protecting the quarterback out of the shotgun. Burns down the left side. Pass intended for Lauderdale, and it's overthrown out of bounds. Incomplete once again, stopping the clock with 27 seconds to go. Chris Ware step for step with the intended receiver. Uh, Good defense on the part of the Knights that time. 
Ball at the 25-yard line in Castle Territory. Boonville trying to get on the scoreboard before halftime. Trailing 7-0 in this ball game. if you're just joining us. You know, Third down and 10. You know, this uh, sophomore has a strong arm. Huh? Todd Miller will break the huddle at the center position. Again out of the shotgun. Trips to the left this time. One wide to the right. Burns will look to the right. Wide and open. Wide open. Oh, and he, and he missed ball. it. Pass intended for Larry Mills, who's had two nice completions tonight. First time he's played varsity football, or any organized football for that matter. Right in his hands. Perfect touch by Sean Burns, and he dropped it. Castle experienced a lot of defensive uncertainty back there. They were uh, running from one side to the other. Uh, it's on the weak side. Yeah, they, show they, trips. they show trips on one side. It's not deceptive by the quarterback. He looks right to the weak side and throws right into no coverage whatsoever. Every time. Uh, Castle putting in some more uh, defensive players here. Uh, but this secondary is being confused by this trips. Uh, Warren, as you say, coming back to that weak side. Uh, Fourth and ten. And Castle from the defensive end calls a timeout. They want to talk it over. They need to resolve that problem because it looks like Boonville is not going to elect to. Uh, yeah, he is. Is he? Okay. Yeah, yeah Hilbert's, Hilbert's in there. In there. This is well within his range, as you said. We watched him warm up uh, uh, earlier before the game. and He was hitting them from 40 yards oh, without easy. any problem. Southwestern Indiana's and possibly Southern Indiana's premier place kicker. Boonville Pioneers' John Hilbert, a soccer player. Well, the soccer players uh, have historically been good kickers, and uh, Bob uh, Proctor... I think, you know, wisely using the talents that's available there in his school. He's converting basketball players into wide receivers and soccer players into kickers. And you do what you have to do, you know. Oh, I bet Larry Mills wish he had that play over again. Oh, I'm sure he does. Young man never played football before, and that'll haunt him, uh, I'm sure, here uh, against Castle. But, you know, one good thing, I mean, he dropped the ball, but his routes have been perfect. Oh, yes. Ball will be placed at the 30-yard line, so we're looking at something just shy of 40 yards from John Hilbert, awaiting the snap from center. There it is. There's the place to kick. It's up. It looks long enough, but it's no, going it's to be to wide to the left. As it hooks to the left, it'll be no good. It'll stop the clock with 16 seconds to go in second quarter action, and we have a Castle player down. Looks like a cramp. I believe it's Kyle Evers, and it looked like he went down with the cramp. He was charging in hard to try to block that kick. I believe it's just a cramp. Uh, Knights will take uh, possession of the ball from the line of scrimmage from where Boonville attempted the field goal. So it'll be first and ten for the Castle Knights from their own 30-yard line. I would imagine that John Lighty will probably elect to just freeze this one out and go into uh, the halftime with a seven-point lead. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. He's not going to take any chances, uh, give up another chance uh, for Hillier to get a, a, a shot at that uh, field goal again. Ball will be placed at the 20 yard line. College and pros, they bring it back out. Right. First and 10 for Castle, I formation. Wide to the left with Ware, slot to the right. And they'll just freeze it out as Tom Merrill goes down to his right knee. And the clock continues to run down. Now under 10 seconds. And that's the way it's going to shape up. It's going to be exactly what John Lighty said it's going to be a low scoring affair. And that's the end of the first half of action here from Castle High School with the Castle Knights leading 7-0. We'll be back with our halftime guests right after this commercial timeout brought to you by Bear Plumbing and Oakland City College. Problems with your plumbing or water heater? Need a quick repair or just a professional installer who does quality work? Bears Plumbing Incorporated has an entire fleet of service technicians available 24 hours a day. Whether it's residential or commercial repairs, Bears Plumbing's got the equipment and experienced, courteous personnel to get the job done right the first time. Or if you're a do-it-yourselfer, Bears has the supplies you need to help you with your job, big or small. Need a repair? Call the Bear at 853-2305 or look for their ad in Ameritech Pages Plus. The newest college campus is in your home or at your office. Oakland City College introduces college courses on videotape. Accelerate the degree process, increase your job knowledge and ability, or just explore subjects you want to know more about, all through the convenience of videotape. And the support of faculty and fellow students is there when you need it. It's accessible, fully accredited, and at your fingertips. 
For more information about Oakland City College telecourses, call 1-800-737-5126. Well, it's halftime here at uh, Castle High School with the Castle Knights leading 7-0 over the Boonville Pioneers. And uh, for the halftime ceremonies here, I'm going to turn it over to Jack Keller, who has some very special guests from the 1982 Castle football squad. Thanks, Warren. I have with me Mike Davis, who was the All-State quarterback for the Castle Knights, along with, with uh, Dave Brosmer. There was a couple of Brosmers on that team. Dave was an All-State tailback. And these two guys uh, have joined us up here, and we appreciate it. Uh, let's bring the fans up to date, Mike. What are you doing? Where are you at? I'm, I'm currently living in Boston, working for uh, digital equipment, and I've uh, been out there for about three years. Uh, married or single? Still single, yeah. S doing the single thing, yeah. So the girls here, you'll be home how long, Mike? Please, please. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, some young lady hasn't trapped you. Dave uh, Brosmer, uh, where are you at, and what are you doing? Well, I'm a sales person for a break supply company here in Evansville. Uh, I'm married to uh, my beautiful wife, Julie, and I have a brand new baby daughter. It's five months old. Her name's Casey. Well, we saw her entertaining uh, the troops down there before the game. She's a beautiful young lady and one you can be proud of. So you got caught. You're no longer on the uh, foot, foot free and fancy free. What? No, I'm locked in. <laughs> what do you think about this uh, gathering? Tell you what, uh, you get back here. It's been a, been a while since I've been back. You get back and uh, you hear the fans and see the team come out on the field, and it really brings back some some great feelings from from past. Yeah, it's a wonderful experience. I mean, uh, we've got kind of a, a weekend of several things planned. I think us guys are going to go hack around on the golf course tomorrow, and uh, of course we're all meeting down at the Legion. Uh, this evening for a little party afterwards and it's just great to be back and i have all the other guys like mike you know being in boston back i haven't seen them in a while it's fun renew, chance to renew a lot of old friendships right i'm sorry chance to renew a lot of old friendships it's a, it's a lot of fun and you, know, you stay you can stay in touch with some of the folks but a lot of them it's hard to stay in touch with so these kind of events are great you get back together and uh and, and like you said rekindle some of those friendships well we talked about early in the show uh the flea flicker, which you two were part of the threesome that, that made that play famous for Castle. What kind of memories did that bring back, Mike, when they threw that? I'll tell you what, that's a wonderful feeling. You know, one, one in particular, when uh, we were at Martinsville and down late in the game, and Dave brings the play in, and never forget that feeling when he brought that play in, and we ran it, and, you know, as soon as the play was called, I think everyone knew it was going to work. Well, the, the play uh, in that particular night went from uh, Mike Davis to Dion Chester, who is now a coach at uh, Ball State, who can't be here this evening because of recruiting. He had to leave as soon as the festivities were over. And then on the receiving end of that pitch was David Brosner. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, it was great. I, I love seeing that. I was uh, asking a few folks before the game if we you know, thought we'd see it again, and uh, a few had their doubts. But I thought, I think it'll come out again. It's, it's nice to see it after 10 years happen again. Well, I think there's a lot of nostalgia here tonight, and uh, uh, a lot of a lot of good things. What what out of the past ten years of the, of that team? What's your fondest memory? Uh, you know, I, I think just just the friendship that we had. We had a, a a great opportunity to work together from seventh grade on, six years of football together, and you really build a lot of a lot of friendship in that. And and I think that had a lot to do with our success. And it's good to get back, again get back together and uh, and and relive some of those things. Dave, what's your opinion? That's the same. I mean, uh, we, we had just sort of an unbreakable bond, and it just grew from the time we were seventh graders up until the seniors, and, and we just developed that, you know, throughout the years, and, and it's just great to be back together again. Well, I think it's been real evident uh, watching you guys tonight and visiting with uh, several of the former players that this bond still exists. It did when you played. I think you came up at hard times. Uh, you were all but out of it at Martinsville. The public address announcer up there said that they're going to have a victory celebration in the gym, and in comes the flea flicker, and kind of ended their party, didn't it? We did have a celebration. It was just the wrong, different gym. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> and then on to the uh, semi-state uh, and state championship against Hobart, uh, and that was a, a memorable night also for everybody. Sure was, yeah. Something, something we'll all, none of us will forget. The culmination of a long dream. It started back in seventh grade. Just kept it going. Okay, uh, listen, uh, we sure appreciate it, uh, Mike. Uh, Dave, we appreciate you taking time out here from enjoying the festivities this evening, coming up and join us, and best of luck to both of you. Okay. Now back to Warren. Thank you, Jack. We're at halftime here at Castle High School. Fantastic halftime show being put on by the Castle Knights marching band. 
with the Castle Knights on top of this game 7-0. We'll be back with all the stats from the first half of action right after this commercial timeout brought to you by Peter's Jewelers, the Shirt Wagon, and Newburgh Cinema. A word from Dieters. What makes these diamonds so very special? Their cut, their color, their clarity, of course. But something else sets them apart. They're from a caring, family-owned jewelry store. Professionals with a tradition for quality and a reputation for fair value. That's what makes these diamonds so very special. Quality and value. That's the promise of Dieters, a classic tradition. The Shirt Wagon is your full-service t-shirt and sweatshirt shop, offering screen printing, spin art t-shirts, 400 different transfers, first quality apparel, custom lettering, photo transfers, airbrushing, and even trolls, plus much, much more. So if you're buying a gift for one or outfitting the entire team, see us at the Shirt Wagon in Washington Square Mall, right next to the food court, or call us at 477-6670. Come to Newburgh Cinemas and enjoy quality entertainment that's so close to home. It's the entertainment center in Warry County. Newburgh Cinemas has been bringing you first-rate movies for over 18 years. Thursday through Monday, adults are just $3.75. Children and senior citizens, only $2.50. Tuesday and Wednesday nights, all seats, only $2.50. And free refills on a bucket of hot popcorn all the time. Now playing, it's Christopher Columbus, rated PG-13. And a league of their own, rated PG. For showtimes, call Newburgh Cinemas at 853-6661. About four more minutes remaining in uh, our halftime show. And as you're looking at the scoreboard, Castle Knights enjoying a seven-point lead. I don't know whether John Lighty enjoys a seven-point lead. He predicted a low-scoring game. That's what we're getting. And, Jack, it's been a game of momentum, and it's been uh, really kind of strange. We were talking about that before uh, uh, we came back live uh, during the uh, commercial timeout. And it looked like the momentum was going Boonville's way. They had uh, uh, turned the ball over to Castle, but instead of Castle taking advantage of that turnover, as you should in football, they were pushed back about 14 yards, and it looked like Castle uh, was starting to move backwards in the transition on the punts. And lo and behold, uh, the end of the quarter, they change uh, ends of the field and the flea flicker. That's been the difference of this game. Yeah, no question about it. The surprise element there. Uh, and the Knights turned the moon back the other way. And then we had to swing the other way again right before the end of the, of the first half here. Let's take a look at the halftime stats. Well, in the first quarter, and we want to thank Nancy Lighty, the uh, Coach Lighty's wife, who does the official stats. So we have the official stats here. In the first quarter, the visiting Boonville Pioneers racked up 25 yards uh, on the ground, uh, 15 yards passing. They had three first downs. In the second quarter, they got another 28 yards rushing and 80 yards through the air. Three more first downs, giving them a total of six first downs. They gained 53 yards net on the ground, 94 yards up in the air for a total offense of 147 yards. For the Castle Knights, uh, they rushed for 50 yards, uh, 49 yards in the first quarter. They had zero yards passing. They had two first downs. In the second quarter, they rushed for 50 yards added another 24 yards by the air. They had four more first downs, giving them a total of six first downs for the first half, 99 yards on the ground, 24 yards by passing for a total of 123 yards. Statistically, Boonville is total offense is about uh, 20 more yards than the Castle Knights. Brings up a point. The flea flicker went for 55 yards, and we're showing 24 yards passing in the uh, uh, no, it was 80 yards. So yeah, 80 yards. It, it, it was in there. Yeah. Okay, those are the stats. One minute and 40 seconds until uh, kickoff of the second half of action. With Castle leading this game 7-0. We'll be back with the kickoff and second quarter action following this commercial timeout. Brought to you by Plaza Pharmacy and Century Cable. Thanks very much and hurry back. Hi, I'm Ken Hacker with Plaza Pharmacy. In the 22 years as a pharmacist in Newburgh, I've learned that service is very important to our patients. That's why, as your pharmacist, we stress service while offering competitive prices. Other drugstores try to fool you into believing that they always have the lowest prices. But I think you'll find that exceptional service and competitive prices are a standard at Plaza Pharmacy. So the next time you have a health care need or require medication, try us. You just might be pleasantly surprised. Did you know? 
the average family of four will spend as much eating out at their favorite restaurant as they would enjoying two full months of family entertainment from Century Cable. Of course, we're not asking you to stop eating out, but to consider the tremendous value of subscribing to Century Cable. Call 853-2935. Just about ready to get uh, underway in second half action here at Castle High School with the Knights leading this one barely 7 nothing. The end of uh, two quarters of action. As Castle tees the ball up. Castle will be uh, kicking the ball left to right across your TV screen. Booville Pioneers still huddled around head coach Bob Proctor, the opposite end of the field. As you can see, they've placed 12 more minutes up on the scoreboard behind the Castle Knights. And uh, it's still anybody's ball game, Jack. Oh, very much so. Uh, I'm sure C Coach Lighty had a few concerns. They they played well for times, and they had some mental laps. Uh, but I, I would suspect that Bob Proctor's got to be pretty happy overall, Warren. He's got a young quarterback, uh, some seniors but haven't played before that look pretty good. Uh, except for a drop pass, this could be a tie football game. Josh Madden and Larry Mills will be back deep for the Pioneers. Awaiting the castle kickoff by Chris Ray. Ray gets the okay from the officials, and here we go. High driving kick down the left side. They'll be taken by Larry Mills. No blockers, and he'll be brought down right across the 20-yard line at about the 22, where the Pioneers will take over offensively, first and 10. I have a feeling when uh, Larry looks at the tape uh, tomorrow, uh, he's going to decide to go to his right, where the blocker, where there was more white uh, jerseys than blue jerseys uh, on his next tent. Ball at the 22-yard line. First and 10. Just underway, third quarter here at Castle High School. Castle starting out the second half with Patrick Mays uh, on the defensive line, uh, the young sophomore. Scherzinger and Squires. Wide to the left. Now Madden in motion. Hand off to the H-back. No gain on the play. Possibly about a yard. As he's thrown back. And it'll be second and nine. The young sophomore Mays made the initial contact. Chris Ware gets up a little gimpy there, Warren, as we see there on the screen. Limping a little bit, trying to shake it off. Uh, but that's a good start for the sophomore here at the uh, second half, uh, making the initial contact on that play. Craig Hoffman kind of uh, gingering his right leg, kind of like a hamstring call, possibly. He's still in there. Hand off around the right end. And he gets the tackle, Craig Hoffman. Sean Cavell. And again, maybe a gain of about a yard, a yard and a half. It's going to be third. And we'll call it, well, now they're going to say he lost a yard, so it's going to be third and ten now. Craig Hoffman, even though he's favoring that leg, moved out there well, watered off the blocker to make the tackle. You know, uh, at six foot four, 245 pounds, uh, Warren, he's, he's a prospect, potential Division I prospect here. Sean Burns, the quarterback, likes the little quick look-in passes, but then again, they may be setting something up with some pump action and maybe possibly a deep pass sooner or later. Double wides right and left, right over the center, and it's intercepted. <laughs> Castle intercepts the ball inside the Boonville 30-yard line, and that was uh, Rob Dieters with the interception. Rob Dieter's uh, in excellent position to to pick off that deflected football that wasn't caught. Uh, and the Castle Knights pick up the first break here of the second half. See if they can capitalize on this. It'll be first and 10 for Castle. Ball will be marked at the 28-yard line in Boonville territory. 10 minutes, 20 seconds remaining in third quarter action. Knights will line up with wide to the right. Slot to the right, tight end to the left, out of the eye formation. Merrill hands off to Goins, and he will be hit behind the line of scrimmage, a loss of about three or four yards. That time uh, there wasn't much of a hole over there, but he did go to the outside instead of turning it up. He might have found another yard or two there, but uh, again, Boonville with that uh, good pursuing team, uh, uh, defensive team over there to make the stop. Loss of four on the play. Ball will be spotted across the 30-yard line at about the 31, where it'll be second and 14. Evers will line up wide to the right. Slot to the right. Play action. Merrill rolling out to the right. He's got Merrill there, his brother, but it's off his shoulder pads, incomplete. 
Big Absolutely. Brother may have a few words for Little Brother on that one. Uh, right through his hands, uh, good pass. Third and 14 now facing the Knights. Following the turnover, so far unable to capitalize on that. This is the time where Coach Light likes to go to, to a draw a lot. We'll see how he, whether he puts it in the air or tries to draw. You see Chris Ray warming up on the sidelines. Might be a little bit out of his range at this point. They need about another 10 yards. Play action pass. Merrill gets loose and has some daylight, but he's not going to get any farther than the 30-yard line. And that'll be a... Net pickup of about three yards, and that's it. He ran about 20, and it'll bring up fourth and 12. They'll be looking at about a 40-yard field goal attempt by Chris Ray. Coach Lighty not even uh, looking to Chris Ray. He sends in uh, Matt Toon. Uh, Matt has an older brother on this, had an older brother on this uh, championship team too, Jeff Toon. Uh, he was a tight end also for the Castle Knights. Uh, was a sophomore of the year that they won the state. Well, John Lighty decides to change the play, and Gabe Merrill will bring that in. And they'll line up wide to the left with Gillis, and they take too much time. So instead of being fourth and 11, they're now facing fourth and 16. They're going to punt it away. In goes Doug Hart, the sophomore long snapper, as Michael is retreating back to punt formation. Well, actually, the extra five yards is going to give them more room to play with as Michael Goins drops back into punt formation. It'll be Sean Cavell and Josh Madden awaiting the Goins punt. Low snap, Goins picks it up, he'll get it off. It'll be a line drive punt, which will be taken by one of the up men. I think it's actually a lineman. And yes, it'll it be thrown dead right at the 20-yard line where Boonville will take over first and 10. That's your, that's the guy. Got the top four now. 8.34 to go in third quarter action here. Paradise, Indiana. Castle High School Stadium. Low scoring affair so far. 7-0 in favor of Castle. Well, we'll see if the Pioneers go right back to the, to the air here on them. Burns will set it up with one lone H back, Aaron Squires. Double wides right and left. Now they're going to have trips on the right side, but they're going to hand off to Squires. No blocking there. As he's ankle tackled, just across the 20-yard line at about the 22. That'll be a pickup of two, and it'll be second and eight. Rob Dieters moved up to uh, make the initial hit on uh, uh, Squires, and then he was polished off by Brent Garland. Uh, Rob's all 5'8", 160-pound linebacker. But he doesn't back away from anybody. Looking at the Castle defense there is... Pioneer set up offensively. Again, wide left and right. Slots left and right. Out of the shotgun. Now Madden in motion. High snap. Pass over the middle. Incomplete. Ball was thrown a little bit too high. It was intended for Jason Tremper. And that was the guy that kind of snuck under the uh, pass defense of uh, Castle there late in the second quarter for about that 34-yard uh, completion. John Gill is right on him that time like a wet shirt, so uh, good coverage. Uh, the ball thrown a little high, as you said. Uh, but John Gill is also uh, uh, showing excellent uh, defensive coverage on that play. That time they uh, threw into their strength over there on the right side. Most of their success in passing, Boonville's we're talking about, is they'll show uh, uh, trips to the right and then uh, throw back to the lone uh, wide receiver on the left side. Get out of the shotgun. Wide left and right, slot left and right. Burris on the lawn signal. Now Madden in motion, and he takes too much time. That'll be delay of game. And we'll back it up five yards, so instead of it being third and seven, it's now going to be third and 12. Well, you see that in the uh, early part of the season. This is the uh, first official game for uh, both teams. They both played in Jamborees last weekend, but that's where you're going to see the delay of games. Surprisingly, we haven't seen a lot of encroachment or offsides tonight, so... That's uh, in favor of both of these squads. No, actually, it's uh, been a well-played football game for the first season. And, uh, again, a sophomore quarterback, too, Warren, that uh, it's going to improve on that, getting his team up there a little quicker as he matures a little bit here. Same formation out of the shotgun, wide left and right, slot left and right. And now 
Madden in motion and another flag on the play. I don't think it was too much time. I think we're just going to see uh, motion. backfield in motion. Well, they had two people going at the same time, and the rules say that that uh, shouldn't happen. So they'll back it up another five yards. So instead of being third and 12, it'll now be third and 17. Initially, they were really looking at third and seven. Two miscues backs them up inside the 15-yard line to about the 12. And now Sean Burns has his back to the goal line. This work, Castle could come with some linebackers here to put a little pressure. Trips to the right. One wide receiver, wide to the left. Uh, again, and motion. again, motion. That time, Aaron Squires uh, anticipated the count, one count ahead, and stood up from his stance. And they call motion, and they're going to back it up another five yards. So instead of being third and 17, it's now going to be third and 22. And once again, it should have been third and seven. Referee over talking to Bob Proctor, uh, explaining the situation. Uh, I'm sure Bob not too happy with the mistakes here that his young ball club making right now. He's next almost going to be in the end zone. Yeah, next time out, they're going to have to go uh, half the distance to the goal line. Again, the same formation, trips to the right. One wide receiver to the left. H back back in. And they run the draw to Aaron Squires. And I think Castle was anticipating that. And there will be no gain on the play. And it's going to bring up fourth down. And now Boonville is going to have to punt from within their own end zone. Casey Jackson, the six foot three, 230 pound uh, junior tackle, was all over him like a wet shirt out there. As you say, he anticipated that well. Got a lot of help then from the rest of the interior linemen. And as you said earlier, John Hilbert uh, has not really been tested as a punter. And I would imagine the Castle may uh, throw uh, uh, well, they've a got, lot of people his way. They've got eight people up on the line of scrimmage with two backers, only one man back, Chris right Ware. Hilbert awaiting the snap. It's a low one. He'll gather it in. Puts his foot into it. Gets a booming kick. Ware will take it right at the 45-yard line. All kinds of daylight off to the left side, down inside the 20, where he's finally ridden out of bounds. A really nice return of about 22 yards by Chris Ware. Puts the Castle Knights deep into Boonville territory where it'll be first and 10 from about the 18-yard line. That's the way you draw it up on the drawing board. Uh, young Chris, uh, real happy with that one. Uh, he was able to take that one on the run, move to his left, and pick up a lot of good yardage down the sideline. So Castle again knocking at the door. We have to see Warren if they can get it in. 7-16 remaining in third quarter action here. Boone, Boonville down by seven points with the Castle Knights leading 7-0. And they're knocking at the door once again. Ball at the 18-yard line deep in Boonville territory. Tom Merrill lines up his Castle Knights. Handoff. No play action. No second man through. Goins. He's on the corner. There's nobody there. Touchdown. Michael Goins, 18-yard scamper. And uh, looked like he was stopped as he turned up field, bounced off one man, and turned it around the corner for the touchdown. Warren Castle went for the first time tonight to the double tight ends. They had two tight ends, a tight formation in there, which I think then brought in the Boonville defense, which allowed Michael then to spring outside. And as we've said all night, once this young man gets on the outside, uh, he's history because there's anybody uh, going to catch him. Score comes at uh, 7 9 mark of the third quarter, putting the Castle Knights up 13-0. Chris Ray in for the PAT. He's one for one tonight, trying to make it two for two. There's the snap, the place, the kick, it's up. And no it good. is no good. Wide to the left. So that makes it 13 to nothing. We'll keep it here while they get ready to kick off. Well, well Castle the, able to capitalize that time, more. Momentum definitely has uh, switched in the favor of the uh, Castle Knights. All of a sudden, Boonville come out of the locker room. They made three bad mistakes there, mental mistakes as far as the motion penalties, uh, the delay of game. Uh, they're a little bit out of sync, and I'm sure... Uh, Bob Proctor's a little concerned uh, after they really basically played a, a kind of a flawless first half as far as those types of mistakes were concerned. But Castle now able to uh, capitalize on this one, and we'll see if the momentum stays with the Castle Knights now. Castle Flair getting some uh, defensive strategy notes before the kickoff as Chris Ware, Chris Ray make that, tees the ball up, gets back into the huddle. Now we're getting ready to kick the ball off. 7.09, remaining in the third quarter, as you see on the scoreboard there, by Chris Ray. Castle will join a 13 to nothing lead. 
It'll be Clavel and Madden back deep for the Pioneers. Raise kick. We'll go to the right side. Clavel will take it at the 15-yard line. Turns it to the center of the field. And mm. no blockers once again. He stopped dead just shy of the 25-yard line where it'll be first and 10 for the Pioneers. He's met over there by John Saunders, uh, number 20, who's a 5'9", 155-pound uh, junior. And uh, he really uh, clamped and wrapped up like you teach uh, out on the practice field. Nothing in the rules that says if uh, you're 155 pounds, you can't hit somebody hard. That's exactly right. Uh, and the young man showed that. And speaking of, of small people, again, uh, we see Craig Tibbetts out there on the uh, as a linebacker. Uh, Craig uh, is also uh, not known for his size at five foot nine, 160 pounds. Pioneers line it up, trips to the right. Now they're going to even things out with a man in motion. As Burns rolls out to the right, he's got two men open, and it is complete to Clavel as he turns it upfield and gets the ball across the 45-yard line up to the 47. That'll be a first down, and finally something good happens to the Boonville Pioneers. Well, he was uh, he was open out there. Uh, he juggled the ball a little bit, but was able to hold on to it, and Castle then uh, swarmed in for the tackle. But uh, they also... I noticed they had a man open over the middle, so someone uh, on the Boonville scouting team may be watching that. They may come back and come across the post pattern on that one because it was wide open. Ball at the 47-yard line, first and 10 for Boonville. Wide left and right. Now Clavel in motion, takes the handoff, cuts it back off right tackle. No gain on the play as that was defended extremely well by the Castle Knights. It'll be second and 10. Rob Dieters again uh, uh, in there making that hit. Uh, all 160 pounds of him, five foot eight, uh, senior, and he's a hard-nosed young man. Sean Burns speaking to one of the officials. I don't know what that was about. Wasn't going to call timeout. Plays brought in from the sideline. Second and ten, facing the Pioneers. Ball in their own 47-yard line as they wait for one more player to come in. That's John Scherzinger. He'll line up wide to the left, they'll also wide right. And now they're going to bring a man in motion. Roll out to the left. Burns gets the ball off, but he was hit a ton. And I'm sure that that uh, led to the incomplete pass. And it'll bring up Andy Mason, the uh, center now playing uh, defensive uh, down lineman, really delivered a blow, as you said. Uh, welcome to varsity football, Warren. It's awfully difficult to roll out to your left when you're a right-handed passer. One of the toughest plays in, uh, in football. Yep. Third and ten now. Wide left and wide right. Two slots, right and left. Now Madden in motion to the near side. Burns plenty of time this time over the middle. Has his man. It's complete. And he's got one man to beat. He's not going to make it. But it will drive the ball down into... About the 20-yard line, once again, the name Jason Tremper. Two big catches for Tremper tonight. Well, Javon L saved uh, the touchdown. We've got John Gillis down on the ground. Looks like he has a cramp out here also uh, uh, this evening as they're taking time out on the field here, Warren. Well, you see a lot of that uh, in the early part of the season. Uh, I think it's related to heat. You can't yeah. say that this is a hot night, but, uh, you know, you build up a lot of fluids. You get a lot of salt uh, in your system and uh, uh, late in the game. Uh, that's when you start to see those cramps occur. Dr. Chris Gilkey out there from Gilkey Power Practic uh, attending to John. Uh, now Coach Lighty trots onto the field also so to check this out. Speaking of Dr. Chris Gilkey, the Caster Player of the Game is sponsored by Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic. And a donation will be made to the Area Special Olympics in the name of our Player of the Game by Dr. Chris Gilkey of Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic. Recipient will be judged on accomplishment and or statistics throughout tonight's game. And Jack and I will uh, be making that decision uh, following uh, the end of the game tonight. And uh, it's really nice to have uh, Gilkey Chiropractic involved in uh, this endeavor. Well, Chris uh, is a former Castle player, and he comes back and, and does this, uh, does a real good job with these kids. Boonville now fairly deep into Castle territory. Ball placed right at the 20-yard line. Wide outs right and left. Handoff goes to Clavel. He's got some room around the right corner, and he turns the corner and gets dangerously close to first down territory and a late flag 
We're going to have a clip, I believe, over there. Uh, Boonville, uh, as, as the linebacker field to come back around, he was hit in the back. Uh, as we see uh, Kyle Evers clapping his hands, he got he got clipped. So that's going to move the Pioneers back 15. Another penalty against Boonville that has literally killed them tonight. So instead of uh, being second and two, we're now looking at uh, first and 25. Well, actually, they will probably mark that off from the right. uh, the point of infraction. Right. So it'll be more like about uh, first and 14 or first and 15. 15 maybe. Yeah. Just a tick under five minutes remaining in third quarter action. Knights on top of this one, 13 nothing. Be great to get a win under their belt after a disappointing season a year ago of two and seven. Yeah, I'm sure John Lighty wants to get this off. Uh, and, and let's face it, these kids I'm sure want to do well with their peers in the stands here from the night from the '82 season. Uh, uh, watching them, uh, they don't, they don't, they don't want to lose any uh, pride here. Well, they're going to mark it off first and 16. Wide right and left. And it's going to be a delay, a draw, and off to the back, off tackle to the left. It'll be a pickup of about five or six yards. Nice uh, play. So now they're facing second and ten. Well, they set that up real nice uh, with the passing that they've been doing. Uh, a little delay action there. Brent Garland got a hand on him to trip him up. Uh, or that might have went for some uh, bigger yardage. Again, out of the shotgun. Double wide to the left, slot to the left. And another miscue as the entire offensive line. Everybody had to count but the center. Outside. Yeah, the center missed that one. <laughs> no. Need to all be on the same page in the hymn book if we're going to sing in unison, you know. And that's, again, uh, first game. Stops the clock at 4-11 showing on the scoreboard. That will negate about half of the gain on the last play. That'll be second and 14. The Knights uh, probably put a little more pressure on it this time. Uh. Trips to the left. Out of the shotgun once again. Snap uh, on cue this time. Over the center. And almost intercepted. That ball was dangerously knocked back into the center of the field and could have been picked off by Castle. It'll go as an incompletion. And it'll make it fourth and 14. Jay Bonnell uh, stepped up uh, five foot eight, 145 pounds. Another one of those big guys we've been talking about here tonight uh, made a vicious hit, and that ball did pop up. Uh, could have been picked off. So we see Patrick Mays uh, trot off the field there, the sophomore. Ball placed on the... 23-yard line, we'll call it. It'll be third and 14. Trips to the right. One wide out to the left. Out of the shotgun with one H back. Looking over the middle. Throws right. Into that's double coverage, up. and that's intercepted by Evers. He was just waiting on that ball and trying to get loose. He'll be tackled down inside the five-yard line. But... Uh, score the turnover in Castle's favor. It'll be first and ten for the Castle Knights. And a Boonville player down on the ground near the goal line. I think we've got to give a lot of credit on that play to Andy Mason, uh, number 63, as he was really bearing down on uh, Sean Burns as he delivered that football. And, and we're beginning to get just a little pressure back there. The Knights are beginning to show uh, uh, a little pressure to Mr. Burns. And well, That's the first time that he's actually thrown in the direction of his trips. Uh, the three wide receivers mm -hmm. normally he would come back to the uh, to the weaker side and find his man wide open. That time he threw it to double coverage. Yeah, I was going to say, that's a sophomore mistake. That was double coverage back there. You're right. Castle will take over possession of the football with about three minutes and 50, sec 50 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Backs against the wall following the interception by Evers. Ball placed just at the five-yard line. Nothing fancy here from Castle, I would imagine. Just uh, some uh, dive plays, trap plays. But imagine that uh, Michael Goins will get the major work out here. Warren, we've got uh, John Gillis down, uh, Dr. Gilkey working on him again. Looks like a cramp again. With three minutes and 50 seconds remaining in third quarter action, we'll be back after this commercial timeout. Regardless of your age or activity level, initially an ankle sprain should be treated with the following manner called rice. Rest the injured ankle. 
apply ice, apply compression, and elevate the injured ankle. If symptoms five for the Castle Knights. First man through, that's Gabe Merrill on the trap. And the trap didn't happen, as you could hear the spotters next to us <laughs> <laughs> complaining. Yeah, and the pickup of a couple, it's going to bring up a fourth and, uh, and short, but John Lighty's not going to risk this. He's going to punt the ball away. Yeah, Coach Mark Williamson says they did not trap. It's, uh, to run a trap play, you need to trap. Probably the most intricate uh, play in football is a trap play. It's got to be executed perfectly, but when it is, it can pop a, a back into the secondary. It's a beautiful play. Long gate. Goins back at his goal line, awaiting the snap, and it's a good one. Heavy rush, gets the ball off, high kick, and we'll get a fair catch right inside the 45-yard line in Castle Territory, where it'll be first and 10 for the Boonville Pioneers. Jason Gent down uh, in good shape covering that uh, fair catch, unless it was bobbled, uh, in case it was bobbled, uh, but it was handled by Joe Jeffrey, uh, five foot ten, 168 pound junior for Boonville, and they take over first and ten. Minute 46 seconds remaining in third quarter action, heading toward the final stanza here at Castle Stadium, with the Knights enjoying a 13 point lead. But Boonville with possession, one score could get them right back into this ball game. Cavell in motion, takes the handoff, tries to skirt wide right, cuts back, and runs into his own man, but turns it into a nice gainer, picks up about four or five yards. Putting the ball uh, now inside the 40-yard line at about the 39, where it'll be second and a long five. Just an outstanding individual effort on uh, Colville's uh, part, uh, Warren. He was he was hit twice in the backfield. See the Castle players standing along the sidelines, enjoying tonight's game. It can be tough to keep your head in the game if you're uh, standing on the sidelines. That's right. Man in motion again, and they run the reverse this time to Josh Madden. And I think Castle did a tremendous job of defending that. Turns it into about a half-yard loss as uh, Madden had to run at least 20 yards to lose one. Rob Dieters again, uh, number 27 there uh, you see on the screen, uh, the 5'8", 160-pound uh, linebacker. Smelled that one out, just uh, glided with him, and then made the hit. Just like Boonville has been like a half step off offensively all night long uh, mm -hmm. in their uh, uh, their quick pass patterns, and, and that time uh, there was a, a bobble with the man in motion, mm -hmm. and it just didn't set up properly. Uh, again, the, the thing Proctor was worried about, a young team. Third and eight. Again, Clavel this time going around right in. One man breaks a block, but he gets past him and picks up the first down. Bubble. Ball down inside the 30-yard line. Bubble. Ball is loose, and let's see who gets it. Yeah. Uh, they pile up on it, and they... Castle players are saying we have it. But the only thing that counts is what the official says. Clock down to 19 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Castle has Castle's it. got it. Another turnover by the Boonville Pioneers. Gives Castle excellent field position. Look like John Gillis uh, come up uh, with the football over there. Again, you see it all the time. Second effort is mm -hmm. tremendous, but that's where the fumbles occur. The man is slowed down and the ball is exposed momentarily. All it takes is a helmet or a hand or an elbow or a knee. And what is a nice gainer turns into a turnover. Castle again with another opportunity here. Ball at the 26-yard line. First and 10 for Castle. Clock down now under nine seconds. Let's see if they can get the playoff. High formation, two tight ends. They'll hand off to Goins off right tackle. And he'll churn out about four yards, advancing the ball down across the 30-yard line up to the 31. And that's the end of third quarter action here at uh, Castle High School with the Castle Knights leading 13-0. I'll be back with more Castle Knights football after this commercial timeout brought to you by Oakland City College and the Warwick County Democratic team. The newest college campus is in your home or at your office. Oakland City College introduces college courses on videotape. Accelerate the degree process, increase your job knowledge and ability, or just explore subjects you want to know more about all through the convenience of videotape. And the support of faculty and fellow students is there when you need it. It's accessible, fully accredited, and at your fingertips. For more information about Oakland City College telecourses, call 1-800-737-5126. Your Warwick County Democratic team is committed to continued growth for Warwick County. Having completed a landfill with a life expectancy of over 75 years, 
paved 103 miles of county roads in just three years, plus acquired, built, and renovated the county annex without taxpayers' money. This November, the choice is clear. Vote for the team that gets the job done. Vote Democrat. Getting ready to start the final stanza here. 12 more minutes put up on the board. And Castle will run with two tight ends out of the I formation. And a slot up pretty close to the line of scrimmage. Off to Cohen, skirts off right tackle again. And uh, that's been the bread and butter play all night long for the Castle Knights. And he'll pick up another three or four yards. And it'll be third down at about four. Well, we'll see uh, Coach Lighty stay pretty close to the vest now, Warren. Uh, if he can keep moving in, get a few first downs, uh, he'll control this football game. Uh, John's been doing this for 20 years. He's starting his 20th season here tonight. Uh, so he's been in this situation a lot, a lot of times, and he plays it pretty close to the vest normally. Third and four, we'll call it. Ball just shy of the 35-yard line at about the 33. They need to get the ball across the 35 to about the 36. And a little mix up in the backfield. Oh, uh, Merrill sure. gets loose, and he'll pick up the first down as he is free. Oh, you hate to see your quarterback hanging out like that. But he gets the first down, and we have a uh, Boonville Pioneer down on the ground. Well, an outstanding one of those second efforts we've been talking about. And Tom Merrill sort of showed it on that one, showed some quickness, uh, hung in there uh, tough, and, and picked up the first down. You know, that's a, you expect that out of a senior, though, and you, you've got to have it out of your senior quarterback. Or cable advertising bringing you the game tonight. And uh, not only uh, Castle varsity football, but uh, tomorrow we'll be carrying Castle uh, soccer on a tape delay basis as we will be taping the game between uh, New Albany and Castle in soccer. And that will be replayed tomorrow night on Channel 23 starting at 10.30 p.m. If you'd like to join us for that. Castle, we will be carrying swimming, some of the girls' sports. It's going to be a lot of fun all season long. Well, I think this is, you know, a great uh, thing for uh, the Newburgh uh, work community uh, that this is being done. Uh, uh, I think it'll help generate some interest here uh, in our community for Castle Sports. And, and uh, I know I'm certainly looking forward to this football season as we're getting off to a good start here. We're carrying varsity basketball as well when that season rolls around. Just under 11 minutes to go in the ball game now. Again, everything in tight on the line, out of the I formation. Goins, once again, off right tackle. It's like a stuck record, but uh, he'll pick up another two or three yards. It'll be second, and uh, we'll call it a long seven. You can expect that record to stay stuck until they stop it. Uh, as I said earlier there, uh, Coach Lighty will keep this one pretty close to the vest now, try to run that clock and pick up some first downs and, and play it to the end. Play brought in from the sideline. Officials timeout. Now they'll wind it down, as you can see. Coming down at about ten and a half minutes to go. A lineup with two tight ends and the slot in tight as well. Out of the eye formation. Going this time will test the left side. And he'll pick up about six yards. He'll get stacked up across the 45-yard line up to about the 47, where it'll be third and one. Just the just the straight uh, blocking straight ahead, the blast play off to the left, and Michael gets within what a yard or so of the first down. Greg Wilson will bring the play in from John Lighty. He'll pass that off to Tom Merrill. Again, officials want timeout as one of the officials uh, walks over to the Boonville sideline. Warren, we got a new tackle over on the right side uh, for Castle. Another sophomore, uh, Jeff Elmer, six foot, two hundred and sixty pound sophomore. Officials wind the clock down. Again, nothing new. I formation. First man through this time, Gabe Merrill. He'll pick up the first down plus about three extra yards. Ball will be now in the Boonville territory as they unpile. Let's see where they mark it. They mark it right on the 50-yard line. Another first down for Castle. They play ball control and clock control. Yeah, we were marking at the end of the first quarter that we thought that this was a, going to be a fairly quick game. Well, sure drug second, out the third, and now fourth quarter. <laughs> it's uh, taking a little bit more time than we anticipated. Goins off the left side. He's got plenty of room, and he'll be close to the first down. Needed to get to the 40, and it looks like he's going to be about a yard shy, so it'll be second and one. 
again just straight ahead uh, Castle just coming behind their uh, seniors over here on this side uh, straight Castle football this might be an opportunity for Castle with uh, two and second down and uh, about two to go for them maybe to air it out I think that you might catch uh, Boonville and there's probably two chances heels. of that happening slim and none I formation two tight ends again Goins off left tackle he'll get the first down plus about four more Ball will be across the 40-yard line, down to about the 37. Another first and 10. Opportunity for Coach Lighty to get some sophomore experience over there. I've been watching the right side of that line as he's got uh, Patrick Mays and, and big uh, Jeff Elmer uh, over there anchoring that side of the line now. Now under nine minutes to go in the game. Again, everything... Packed in tight on the line. They'll hand off to Goins on the right side. Cuts it back up the middle. Almost breaks it loose. An ankle tackle saves a touchdown. And he'll just be shy of the 25-yard line. It should be enough for another first down. Michael Slow getting up. Uh, looks like he's favoring his ankle. Uh, this has been one of the problems that Michael's had in his career. Uh, has been some injuries that, uh, that he's had some trouble with. And they're bringing him out of the ball game. Uh, they haven't bought in a table by I guess uh, Craig Tippins is coming back in to replace him. Eight and a half minutes to go in the game now. Tibbetts at the tailback position and a fumble on the play. Everybody piles up and they're going to say Boonville recovers. So with 819 to go Boonville could get right back into this if they could score. That's one of those problems when you Switch a tailback uh, at this time, time in the ball game. Uh, timing's a little different. Uh, those things happen. Uh, but I'm sure Coach Lighty didn't want to see that happen at this particular time as he was mounting a real sustained drive and doing exactly what he wanted to do, eat the clock up and keep the ball alive. It's been a game of turnovers, as most football games are. The team that has the least amount of turnovers normally wins, but you have to capitalize on them to win, and that's been the case tonight. And a delay of game to be called against Boonville as they had trouble getting uh, their players on the field. And they moved the ball back five yards. That has been a plague with the Boonville offense tonight. Tom All sorts of miscues. Tom McLean, a 5'10", 220-pound junior tackle, is in on the defensive line now for the Castle Knights. Ball be marked at about the 23-yard line, making it first and 15 to get the first down. They have to get all the way up to about the 38. Got trips to the right. One single back. 7.52, as you can see, remaining. Roll out to the right. Burns. Got a fly pattern. Got a man there, and it goes incomplete. Pass uh, was intended for Josh Madden. Had he been able to catch it, he would have been out of bounds. They've thrown a flag. Uh, here's a hit out of bounds, I guess, as the ball was thrown out of bounds. And I'm sure Coach Lighty just waving it off, telling these players not to get excited. Coach Hawkins, uh, uh, not, a, not a good call, just frankly. Uh, uh, both players going outside for the bounce uh, to uh, try to get the reception. Well, penalty is going to go against Kyle Evers on the hit out of bounds. That'll stop the clock at uh, 7.45. So the five-yard penalty for delay of game will be next, and Boonville will be 10 yards to the better. And it'll be first and two. At this point in time, uh, Castle doesn't want to argue with the officials. They're just uh, backing up and going to reset it. Well, they give them the uh, first down on the play. It'll be first and ten. I formation. Double wides to the right, single to the left. Burns looking to the left, passes over the middle, and it is complete to Jason Tremper. Third time we've called his number tonight. Again, uh, Warren, that uh, trips to the right, coming back to the weak side, coming across the middle. A uh, little look-in pass, and they've had a lot of success with that tonight. I would imagine if uh, any of the teams that are going to be playing uh, Castle uh, in the future are here scouting, they're going to be uh, marking that down on their notepads all night long. Well, we have the Bossy Bulldogs here next week, and uh, that'll be interesting. Wide right and left, slot left and right, out of the shotgun, and it's a shuttle pass. And this time, they'll break it loose. That's Sean Caubell. Picks up about five yards on the play. 
and uh, well, make that about two yards on the play, so it'll be second, and we'll call it eight. The old shuttle pass, uh, ja Jackson got a hand on the football at that time, almost broke it loose, uh, but just wasn't quite able to. Clock now down under seven minutes to go in the ball game, and Boonville on somewhat of a sustained drive here with a late hit penalty. Trips to the right this time. Burns looking to the weak side once again, and the pass goes incomplete. It was uh, intended for Jason Tremper, but that time Castle uh, uh, knew that what they were doing and defended it well. Yeah, we had Craig Tippett's uh, up there along with uh, Chris Ware uh, in excellent defense. You know, it's really uh, the free safety's job to, uh, to sniff that out. Yeah, he has to pick up that weak side man. 6.42 to go in the ball game now. They'll show trips to the right. Single wide to the left. Long snap count. Jason Trimper moved over on the far side. It'll be Looking encroachment. Back, back him up five yards. So instead of third and seven, it'll be third and 12. We have uh, Coach Hawkins here trying to explain the defensive coverage that he wants with uh, John Gillis and Kyle Evers as we seem to the Knights have had a little bit of a mix-up back here, and uh, he's trying to straighten this out here. Ball be marked just across the 45-yard line. Once again, out of the shotgun. Double wides to the right, single wide to the left. Burns looking to the left this time. All time to pass. Overthrows uh, Jason Tremper. Ball goes out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock at 6.35. You know, this trip uh, presents a lot of unique uh, defensive problems to you. Uh, you know, you have people going all directions and cutting back and crossing and, and what have you. And, you know, it's a defensive nightmare back there for uh, cornerbacks and free safety to decide who to take and who not to. And it's awful easy to get a man open. Uh, that's a it's a good offense. Well, team. you're almost forced to play a nickel defense, prevent almost. defense, mm -hmm. just about uh, through the entire game. But then uh, Boonville has not been uh, uh, overly aggressive on the ground either. No, no. It's almost like they'll, they'll run uh, uh, Cobell around one of the ends on a sweep or a misdirection play just to keep them honest so that they can pass more. Well, that's, I think that was definitely their game plan. That's the run and shoot. You use the run to, uh, to set up the pass. To lay a game. Well, how many times have we seen that tonight? That's probably the fifth time. And I'm sure that uh, Boonville will work that out. They'll have uh, all, uh, all next week to, uh, to practice the huddle and, and getting that play called. Well, Coach Proctor was, had some concerns when I talked with him last night on the phone about these type of things. He said, you know, you just don't have a lot of time to get ready. Fourth and 20. Hilbert back deep. Awaiting the snap, and it's a good one. He mishandles it, but he'll get it up. No, it's blocked. Block. And it can be picked up. Yes, yes here yes. we go. Craig oh, Tibbetts. Tibbetts falls down. Falls down. And that's going to be a piling on. Uh, late hit. Well, he fell down at the 15-yard line. <laughs> so it'll be half the distance to the goal line. So it should be marked at about the 7 and a half. Craig you know, Tibbetts it, saw the goal line. And <laughs> we'll, we'll get Jim Williams to mow that grass just a little shorter next week. Uh, he just kind of tripped over the grass. But, you know, he's been getting close all night. Uh, and then with that, just that little... Delay there in, in mishandling the footballs, all that it took to get him there. He and Rob Devers had been back there uh, uh, in his face all night long, and I thought earlier in the game that uh, we just might see a block punt before the night was over. Well, once again, the momentum has switched, and Boonville, unable to capitalize on Castle's miscue, turns the ball back over to the Castle Knights. Castle leading this one 13 to nothing if you're just joining us with about six and a half minutes to go in the ball game. And the Pioneers want a timeout. I'll we'll talk this over. You know, with the momentum switching in favor of, of Castle, especially with the ball down uh, inside the 10 yard line, they're going to mark it at the nine. I'd anticipate at seven and a half. But uh, Boonville's not out of this. If a uh, good defensive stand here uh, and a little bit of luck and they score, uh, even with uh, two minutes. Or even a minute, an onside uh, kick can uh, turn things around. Well, again, when you run a trips offense, a wide open offense, you can score from almost any place on the field. But you know, a touch, uh, conversely, uh, a touchdown and a successful extra point here will just about seal it for the Knights too. So uh, it's going to be a, a, a very, very important uh, series here for both the ball clubs here. 
There you see it, 6-27 remaining in the game. First down, 10 to go in the fourth quarter. Castle up 13 to nothing. As the officials say, the timeout is over. That'll be first and 10 from the Boonville nine-yard line. Castle, possession of the football. Line up in the I formation. Everything tied in again. Hand off to Goins, who's back in. No blocking there on the right side. He'll pick up a yard on sheer effort. That'll be second and goal to go. Well, there the uh, look like it. There might have been a little seam inside. Uh, I'm not too sure that uh, Michael wasn't following the outside blocker uh, there. There might have been a little seam, but he still picked up good yardage uh, on first down. This might be the time for the uh, misdirection off the uh, fake to Goins. Nope, they'll just keep pounding it out. As long as Goins can pick up three and four yards a carry, I guess you don't have to do anything fancy. Ball now inside the five-yard line at the four. So you can see the crowd on hand tonight. That's where we are up here in the press box. Good crowd on hand tonight, too. Uh, a night to remember. And if the Castle Knights score here and put this one away, it definitely will be a night to remember for, for the Knights and their fans. 521 now. Clock moving downward. Ball inside the five-yard line. Third and goal to go for the Castle Knights with Boonville Pioneers, but they're back to the wall. They cannot let Castle score here. Off to Goins, and he's got it. He's got it. Touchdown, Castle. Comes at the 506 mark of the fourth quarter. And that makes it 19 to nothing. And Chris Ray will pick up his tee and trot onto the field to try and make it 17 to nothing. Goins is limping again, as we can see here on camera coming off. Uh, looks like he's got a leg problem. They're trying to carry him uh, now, as a matter of fact. That would not be good news uh, heading into Balsey next week. See which leg he's favoring here. Looks like it's his right. his right one. Been uh, progressive in getting worse through the game. That's what he was favoring the last time he came out. Uh, they're going to they're going to bring some people out to finish carrying him in. Uh. With the uh, Ray PAT, it would make it uh, 20. To Castle, Castle takes time out. Uh, you know, we we may see uh, with this lead and the time left in the game, we may see John Lighty try to go for two here to see uh, try to try to practice a little bit. Uh, something he might need later in the season. Plus it would even it up. It right. probably drives a coach nuts to see 20 <laughs> points on the scoreboard. Right. Knowing that there was a, a miscue. Michael Limpin, uh, rather pronounced here, uh, Warren, as a, he's not really being totally assisted anymore, but. Well, you know, if, you, if you're having multiple uh, leg cramps, especially in the calf area, uh, each time they get worse and worse and worse, I think that you're basically looking at the uh, at leg cramps as you see uh, John Lighty coming back in from talking to his players. Puts his headsets on. Well, we'll see if he's going to go for it. Uh, he's going to kick it in reality or if he's going to try something. Uh, well, they're bit. setting up for the PAT as the band eagerly awaits on the other side of the goalpost. They're going to kick it away. And it looks like it's going to be wide to the right. It'll be no good. So that'll be the second missed uh, PAT attempt tonight. And that makes it 19 to nothing with 5.06 to go in the fourth quarter. And that's going to be a little concern to uh, Coach Lighty. He's going to have to uh, seem like they're getting a little bit of uh, penetration in there, forcing Chris to kick off that side of his foot. Uh, something again to talk about and work on next week. I'm sure all Castle wants to do now is uh, uh, kick the ball off safely to Boonville and uh, hold them through uh, three downs, force the punt, and uh, then just sit on the ball for the remainder of the game. Yeah, I think you'll see the backs back off a little bit. Uh, they feel like it, that it's uh, pretty much wrapped up. I think uh, we've seen Coach Mark Williamson, who's been here beside of us all night, uh, leave along with uh, uh, Andy Keller, who's been helping uh, spot uh, uh, for Coach Lighty here tonight. Uh, they've gone down to the sidelines now, so uh, John's just hoping for, uh, to uh, ride this one out. We see Jonathan Cobb. Uh, Warren putting on his helmet. We may see him if they get the ball back here on the, the next series. Looked exceptionally good in the uh, in the Jamboree. Yeah, really you pointed moved, uh, Castle well against uh, uh, a tremendous Memorial defensive team. 
Yeah, you pointed that out in the pregame show, uh, and we talked about it up here last last week. Jonathan did look real good. Looks like he's going to warm up and maybe get to finish this ball game off. It'll be Josh Madden and Sean Cavell back deep, along with Jason Tremper. And it'll be taken by uh, Tremper, I think that is. And he'll advance it up across the 30-yard line. And late flags. Got all kind of action going on out there. Uh. Well, we're talking about cross-county rivals here. I mean, we talked about that going into the game. I haven't really talked about it that much. But, uh, you know, some of these uh, kids uh, border. Their neighborhoods border on each other. Yeah, well, they know each other. Yeah. And, and uh, it, you know, that can lead to some frustration, I'm sure. Uh, this one, of course, was against Castle, being marked off against Castle. So, uh, you know, we were talking in the in the uh, the stand-up portion of the pregame show uh, about cousin against cousin. Right. I, I told you that I actually participated in a high school football game in which brother played brother. Got That's a lot of media attention. That was up in Indianapolis. <laughs> that could be bloodletting. <laughs> and you know they played opposite each other too. Oh mercy! We've got a, a screen pass over to the left side. And that's Aaron Squires and uh, turns it into a nice gainer. Hard to bring down. Gets the ball down inside the 25-yard line to the 24 and picks up the first down in doing so. Bob Proctor told me last night he was very concerned about Aaron, who's coming off of a broken leg. Uh, I think that question's been answered tonight. Uh, that young man's had a fine ball game out here. He's broke several tackles, uh, made some nice runs. So I don't believe his leg's a problem. Clock stopped at 442 while they moved the chains. And they'll have double wides to the left and the right. Now they're going to bring Clavel in motion. They'll hand off to him. He'll cut it off right tackle. It'll be brought down across the 35-yard line. He's met over there by big Craig Huffman. Uh, Craig uh, looking stronger as the game goes on, uh, and he takes him down uh, rather abruptly to the ground. Ball will be placed on the right hash mark, right at about the 32-yard line. Clock winding down towards the four-minute mark. It'll be second and eight after pickup of two. Out of the shotgun, trips to the right. One single wide out to the left. Long count. Burns looking to the left again. Got a man open. Double coverage this time. Overthrows Jason Tremper. And that'll stop the clock with 3.55 to go in the ballgame. Being covered over there by Chris Ware along with uh, Craig Tippett's. Uh, ball overthrown just slightly uh, on the out pattern. And that's a... That's a difficult pass uh, for anybody to throw, uh, and especially a sophomore. 19 to nothing if you're just joining us. Castle on top of this ball game. Trying to get a, off to a better start than a year ago where they went 2-7. and seven. And you certainly don't want this year to be a rebuilding year. You want to win. Madden in motion to the far side. Burns, pump fakes, rolls out to the left. He's got Madden there, hits him. He'll pick up the first down, down inside the 20, inside the 10, ridden out of bounds, inside the 10-yard line at the 9, where it'll be first and goal to go for the Boonville Pioneers with 3.45 to go in the ballgame. Obviously a defensive lap uh, for the laps for the Castle Knights over there. There wasn't anyone out there. Uh, uh, Sean almost had the option of throwing to him or tucking it and uh, following him down the sideline. Pioneers making this game interesting late in the game. They get on the scoreboard. You have to... Uh, most likely look for uh, an onside kick. Trips to the left this time. Single wide out with Tremper to the right. Out of the shotgun once again on a long signal count. Looking to the left. Now back to the right where Tremper is. He'll hit him in a uh, pattern and it's touchdown. touchdown. Boonville gets on the scoreboard. A 10-yard completion. Sean Burns to Jason Tremper. You can almost see that one coming, Warren. Uh, they set the trips up to the Short side of the field, given uh, Tremper this whole wide side of the field to operate on, and he just did the little out pattern, and the pass was right on the money. Castle, uh, Chris Ware was on the on the, on the defensive play, just a well-thrown ball and a good pattern. Score comes at the 325 mark of the fourth quarter. John Hilbert on for the PAT. Now watch how far this ball goes. He kicks it a ton, and it's good. And it makes it 19 to 7. Castle on top, 325 to go in the ball game. Well, as, as you said, we probably unquestionably will see an onside kick here with Proctor uh, uh, talking to his team over on the sideline. Uh, a recovery, uh, another quick score, and they're back into this thing. Coming up following the game, Jack and I will announce the Castle player of the game. 
That's sponsored by Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic. Donation will be made to the Area Special Olympics in the name of our player of the game by Dr. Chris Gilkey of Gilkey Chiropractic Clinic. The recipient will be judged on accomplishment and or statistics throughout tonight's game. And uh, right now I'm thinking of several names <laughs> yes. that could, uh, could win that honor. It's going to be a, a tough choice tonight. Coming up tomorrow right here on Channel 23, we will bring you the Castle soccer game between Castle Knights and uh, New Albany. That will be tape delayed starting tomorrow night at 10.30 p.m., so join us for that. Boonville getting ready to kick off. Once again, John Hilbert, who has just had a successful PAT. Oh, and it'll be Tibbetts back deep. Oh, but you they're see expecting the yes. onside kick. And they're see. set up strong side over to the left. Uh, Got your hands team in there. Look at all the low numbers, 14, 28, 24. There are no big linemen waiting for this kick at all. And this is something that uh, Bob Proctor works on in practice probably quite a bit. There it is on the left side. Not handled well, but no. Castle will pick it up. And it'll be first and ten for the Castle Knights. The ball will be marked at about the 48-yard line in Castle territory. Of course, that's why you put those hands people in there uh, to try to handle it. As you said, uh, bobbled momentarily, but uh, looks like uh, is that Jay Von L, I believe, getting up off of the... No, it's Matt Toon and Chris Ware uh, getting up. I believe uh, they're helping Chris Ware up a little bit. I think he took a hit as he tried to field that football. Well, we'll see Tom Merrill back in at quarterback. 321 to go in the ball game. At this point, Castle will just try to freeze this one out, control the ball. And Goins is back in. He'll get the call, goes off the right side, picks up a couple of yards, and is pushed back. Ball will be placed shy of the 50-yard line at the 49 after a gain of about a yard and a half, and it'll be second and eight. Well, all they'll tell Michael to do is lower your head and try to pick up what you can, and above all, wrap that football up with both hands because there's going to be a lot of people trying to scratch it loose. Long ball game tonight. And with uh, ball control here, hopefully it might speed things up. But uh, I look for Boonville to uh, start using their uh, remaining timeouts, and I believe that they have two remaining. I believe you're right. And of course, you have the two-minute warning coming up in about 44 seconds, so they'll probably uh, use their uh, two remaining timeouts following that. Handoff goes to Tibbetts, and he'll pick up about five or six yards. Off left tackle. He'll be shy of the first down by about four yards. Michael Goins lost his shoe. He's sitting down here on the sideline uh, putting his shoe back on, and Craig Tippett's is back filling in at the tailback position. Boonville does take one of those timeouts, as you said, Warren. Well, they're going to take it before the two-minute warning at 2.22, and uh, they need to hold Castle here. And they could uh, they could hold him with two minutes and uh, use a two-minute drill and get back on the, on the board. Maybe they might get lucky with another onside kick. Well, again, uh, when you have a trips offense uh, in, the, in a – passing game uh, you're never out of it there you see it 222 three twos three deuces Knights on top 19 to 7 third down four to go in the fourth quarter beautiful night couldn't ask for better weather I was worried yesterday with uh, the hurricane blowing into town you're not only uh, afraid of, uh, of a lot of rain but uh, possibly field conditions but the, the field's been in excellent shape tonight yeah really other than the one trip there uh, there hasn't been any footing problems at all or no apparent footing problems up here. Here we go. Third down and about four to go. Tibbetts at the tailback position. Along with Gabe Merrill at the fullback position. Two tight ends and a slot in tight to the right. And off to Tibbetts, off left tackle. And he'll be stopped shy of the first down. It's going to bring up fourth and one, and this will bring a... They said he fumbled the football. He did, and it looks like Boonville's got it back. Two minutes and 16 seconds left here, Warren. Uh, this game may not be over with after all. So what could be a costly turnover for the Castle Knights? It'll be first and 10 for Boonville at their own 45-yard line. Well, it looked like a little spry in their... Their step out there is uh, the Pioneers take the field uh, on offense with trips. 
Sean Burns will set up out of the shotgun. Trips to the right. Now four going out in a pass pattern to the right. Burns Ooh. down the sideline. John Gillis. John Gillis. Ball was thrown short, and sometimes when you throw the ball short, it normally uh, favors. We've got a penalty back here. They're going to say roughing the passer. Uh, yeah, they're saying roughing the passer back here. Uh, Sean was hit. That might be just a little bit of a questionable call. This is where you'd like to see uh, that again. But uh, he was hit just as he released the football. Uh, looked like, to me, a clean hit, but he was kind of sandwiched in there. But the official felt like uh, that he was roughed. Uh, and they're marking off 15 yards against, uh, against the uh, Knights. Negates the interception and will now place the ball into Castle territory. And uh, they have yet to mark the ball. They'll walk all the way back and count it off. Coach. Always seems silly. I mean, they know where the ball should go. Right. <laughs> but yet they have to go back and mark off the 15 yards. I bet he puts it down right on the 40. What do you bet? Yep. Coach Hawkins would uh, like to have a little explanation of this. First and 10 for Boonville. They trail in this game 19-7, under two minutes to go. If they get on the scoreboard here, most definitely would attempt an onside kick. They could possibly come back and win this one on the toe of John Hilbert. You hate to think about missed uh, point after attempts. Left, complete to Larry Mills, and he'll be shy of the first down at about the 31-yard line as the clock continues to run down. Boonville should have one timeout remaining. Second and two. Trips to the right this time. Mills to the left. Burns lost the pass. Intended for temper. That's He's a got it. Touchdown, Boonville, and they are back in this ball game. Comes with 124 remaining in the game, and that makes it 19-14. Kyle Evers... Uh, Went for the football and uh, missed, and the ball was perfectly thrown to uh, Jason Tremper for uh, the six points. This, as you said, uh, Warren, this extra point now starts looming big. John Hilbert in. For extra point duties. Clock stop, 1.24 remaining in the game. Castle takes a timeout now this time. Uh, Coach Hawkins wants to talk to him. You know, Coach Proctor's got to be thinking uh, that this, in this situation, Warren, uh, of his last visit, his last year at Boonville as the head coach, he came into Castle Stadium in 84, and uh, he felt like that uh, he had the game uh, ahead. Uh, it was a seesaw back and forth uh, game. Uh, Castle took the lead uh, on a broken play uh, with uh, Andy uh, Keller, the quarterback, uh, getting in off the blast play or a missed blast play and going in and getting Castle ahead. Then Boonville come back, scored again. They went ahead. Castle going down the field with a long pass uh, that was intercepted by Boonville, but it was negated by an interference penalty, which Bob Proctor never did feel like was a, a right call. You know, that's got to be going through his mind over a little bit. Here we're back again. Now we, we have a penalty going the other way. There you see it. A minute 24 remaining in the game. And uh, what was a sleeper with Castle on top is now uh, uh, dangerously coming close to uh, being a real pressure cooker for the Castle Knights. Here we go. John Hilbert for the PAT. Hoping to get to within five points. That's going to be a fake. It's fake. And it's going to be sniffed out, and it's going to be unsuccessful. At that point, I don't think they really needed the PAT, so they might as well attempt it. Right. Um, although, with the two points, a field goal wouldn't have done them any good. So it was just kind of a, a rollover situation for uh, the Pioneers. You know, I was uh, at the, uh, the only game in the 1980s in which uh, Boonville beat Castle up in Boonville. And if I remember right, that game came down to, a, I think it was like a 7-7 tie. It was the first year that they had uh, the sudden death uh, situation where they mm -hmm. put the ball at the at the ten yards and uh, ten yard line and take uh, take turns uh, running the ball in successive plays, and uh, Boonville uh, eked that one out. I think after what maybe about uh, four exchanges. Yeah, and the, that was the only time that uh, Boonville beat the uh, Castle Knights in uh, in the 80s. 
And, uh, of course, Boonville won last year, and uh, uh, I'm sure that John Lighty liked that to be the only time that they win in the 90s, but uh, his defensive unit now has got their work cut out for them. Uh, we've got the onside kick being lined up here, uh, shown without any problem, and this time they've got uh, Dieters and Chris Ware both over on that, that side. Matt Everybody Toon. knows it's coming. It's all stacked up on the left-hand side. And again, you got the hands team in. Everybody knows what's going to happen here. Let's see what happens. Hilbert, three steps, kicks it over to the left side. Out of bounds. Ball's going to go out of bounds. Now let's see, did a Castle player touch the ball? If so, they'll mark it right at that point. Yeah, it doesn't make any difference, uh, really. Uh, they get the option, and obviously you're right. Castle's going to take it right there as Tom Merrill's already on the field uh, getting his uh, team lined up. I mean, some type, and that's one of the players that Coach Lighty just can't afford to lose. Uh, Big Craig here is have vast improvement uh, in the last couple of years, and he's the anchor of this line. 6'4", 245 pounds senior. And he does not look good on that leg. We certainly got to hope that, that there's nothing seriously wrong as Doc uh, Gilkey comes over now to take a look at him. Uh, but he's certainly a mainstay in that line. He's went both ways tonight, and he he could have been uh, high in consideration for the most valuable player here tonight as he's went both ways. Well, donation will be made in the name of uh, Michael Goins to the Area Special Olympics by Dr. Chris Gilkey, who is currently attending to Craig Hoffman on the sideline. Less than 30 seconds to go in this ball game. This should be the last play of the game. Clock now winding down to under 15 seconds. But imagine now they're going to hand the ball off to Gabe Merrill. 
And he'll pick up the first down, which is inconsequential. Clock Ooh. stopped at eight seconds while they moved the chains, and that's nope. going to be it. Boonville's called another timeout, and according to ours, I don't think they had one more. That was their fourth. I had it. Yeah. The officials talking to a couple of the Boonville players, but the Boonville defensive uh, coordinator's coming on the field, uh, Jim Williams. So, Well, you know, in the early part of the season, the IHS uh, AA uh, will allow the officials to, uh, to call, uh, uh, I believe, one timeout per half uh, for heat factor. Yes. And I'm just wondering if... Uh, Maybe one of those timeouts was one of those uh, those heat factor timeouts, which they didn't really need tonight, but it's the early part of the season. Yeah, Eight seconds remaining in the ball the game, and this will go up into the W column. Well, a good start for Coach Lighty in uh, walking off the field there. It was a little more relaxed now with this eight seconds. Uh, start off his 20th year here at the helm of the Castle Knights. One more play to go. They'll work out of the pro set, but everybody's in about as tight as you can get. And I look for Tom Merrill just to kneel down, and that's what he does. And a little bit of uh, roughness there that uh, probably wasn't called for. But that's the end of the ball game. Mark this one up in the W column for the Castle Knights as they win this one. 19-13 in a surprisingly tight game for the Boonville Pioneers, uh, really challenging the Castle Knights in the second half of action. We'll be back with Jack Keller and the stats from the game following this commercial timeout. Brought to you by Bayer Plumbing and the Shirt Wagon. Bayer's Plumbing Incorporated can improve the look of your home by giving your bathroom or kitchen a makeover. With the time you spend in the bathtub or shower every day, wouldn't you love an enclosed shower or a luxurious whirlpool tub? Bayer's has the area's largest display of whirlpools. Improve the quality of your water with a water softener. Choose from many models. Think about a new sink, new faucets, a disposal, or a new look for the bathroom. Bayer sells, installs, and repairs all your bathroom and kitchen needs. Call 853-2305 or look for Bayer's ad in Ameritech Pages Plus. The Shirt Wagon is your full-service t-shirt and sweatshirt shop offering screen printing, spin art t-shirts, 400 different transfers, first quality apparel, custom lettering, photo transfers, airbrushing, and even trolls, plus much, much more. So if you're buying a gift for one or outfitting the entire team, see us at the Shirt Wagon in Washington Square Mall right next to the food court or call us at 477-6670. Tonight's final score, the Castle Knights with the win. The first game of the season over the Boonville Pioneers, 1913. And here with the uh, the stats is Jack Keller. Okay, uh, Nancy Lighty just gave me the, the final stats here. Uh, looks like the Castle Knights have a total of 224 yards of total offense. We'll kind of brief through this uh, looking at her book. Uh, it appears that Boonville had a total of 321 yards. Uh, 223 uh, run, 88, or I'm sorry, 233 passes yards and 88 uh, running yards. Uh, Castle had 200 yards, uh, uh, 224 yards, yeah, that had to be in, in the run. So, again, maybe not pretty, but it's a win. Well, it was a case of turnovers and uh, capitalizing on turnovers, and that's what... Uh, what ultimately led to uh, Castle's win, but then again, ultimately put the game in danger late in the in the second half. So well, it's a real interesting game to watch. And this gives uh, Coach Lighty something to uh, work with this week, you know, and they'll be back, and we'll have Bossy next week. Bossy versus Castle next week, right here on Channel 23, brought to you by Warwick Cable Advertising and a host of uh, local sponsors. Tune in tomorrow for uh, a soccer match between Castle and New Albany. And that will be tape delayed right here on Channel 23 starting at 10.30 p.m. Once again, tonight's final score, Castle with the win, 19-13, the final score for Warren Disler and Jack Keller. Good night, everybody. <laughs>